Hello? <laughs> Where is it? Let me get out of here. Right. You know, you know what makes today really good? What? A lot of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> this is like my fourth coffee today. Sharing. But totally worth it. Yeah. Oh, we're live. What's up, Chris? Uh, which one? Um, <laughs> TikTok video? Yeah. <laughs> oh, hold on. Gummy sours make you fucker. <laughs> or sour makes you fucker. Give your balls a target, Tim. <laughs> not appropriate for the stream. <laughs> no, it's not. Okay, never mind. Never mind. <laughs> Chris, what's up? Tom, howdy, Kotu. Oh, we're, we're getting into it tonight. Boys and girls, let's hope I don't mess that up. Oh, I'm going to have to move our oh, microphone. It was closer, especially yours. What's up, Brian? <laughs> Mine? Do I need to, like... Here. Um... Sorry, it's gonna sound noisy. I'm gonna just make a last minute adjustment here. Yeah. Hold on. I mean, we can always move. Well, no, I can't really move the table. Because the spacing is already good. Here, I got the mic if you get that. All the way to the front. Last minute adjustments here. Watch the coffee. Watch the nugs. <laughs> Not the chicken Not nuggets. Ah, Brian. <laughs> oh, Brian. <laughs> What's up? So this is kind of like in the way. Got to sit a little sideways. Sam, howdy. Mr. Gordy's in the house. How you doing, buddy? All right. So I heard, uh, I saw a couple comments actually in the last stream. That Andrew is still too quiet. So, let me know. He was posted. Let's hear it. I, I jacked up the input a little bit better. Um, kind of like on the master. And then I went up two more clicks on Andrew. So he's almost maxed out. I might be too loud. He's probably just right. So, just let us know. Don't be bashful. If any point's like, you know, still not right, let us know. We'll make it work. We'll fix it. But I think I got it sorted out. Sam, couldn't catch any bass today, so I caught two bluegill on the drop shot. Ouch, bud. Yeah. That's rough. No, no bueno. No, hopefully things will get a lot better after this. TV18, what's up, buddy? Um, yeah, after all this kind of hot weather, has finally vacated the vicinity here, and we're looking at some cooler weather. Today was nice. Oh, my God, it was so nice. It was, like, dry, no humidity. It only topped out of, like, 80, 82, oh, something like that. It worked out pretty much all day. Oh, it must have been actually really nice. Yeah, it, my, the AC in my building was set to 64. I said, what about Shiri? Hmm. A little static on yours. Hmm. Okay. Um, want to turn... Let me think about this. Oh, you know what? It's probably the master. So the very far bottom right, go that one, go back two clicks. Let me know if that fixes the static. It was probably too much input. Uh, but I can go fix it on the software end. I tried it mechanically first. And that... Was probably not the right way to go about it. But we'll get her sorted. <clears throat> As you can see, we have a new toy. We're here to do some magic tonight. Talk finesse. 
Because even though right now most people think it's go time of the big stuff, it's also go time of the finesse stuff. If you're not fishing finesse, you're leaving fish behind. A lot. A lot of fish. <laughs> to the tune of what? What are the gaps last week? Between 20 and 25? I don't know. Yeah, something like that. And like 20 of... If, if I caught 25, then 20 of them were on finesse. And we tried... I wanted to keep working the bigger bait, but I caught less fish. Yeah. And he started throwing... El shaky head. Oh, shaky head. I'll leave that there. And was killing. We caught, I, think, I think we got around 20, 25. Somewhere in that window. We kind of lost track. All right. But hopefully... Audio is good. It's 8.06. <clears throat> Wait for one more. Still static. Oh, all right. Uno momento. I think I fix. If it's that, then it's probably... Oh, wait. It wouldn't be mine. Probably yours. Because I jacked yours way up. Oh, yeah. It probably is mine. Okashira head and Kai Tech. All I'm saying. Speaking mm -hmm. of finesse. Yeah, that'll work. Let's see if that does it. I won't properly start until you guys tell me that the static's gone. That's what I want to hear. Well, I don't want to hear. Um, yeah, so I don't have any of those with me in here. Wait, wait. I know I have the swim baits. I may have the head right here. Whoa, dude. Where'd you get this? I am talking to you. Oh, Brian says it sounds good. We have one more demonstration. Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Don't worry. Ahead. All right. Sounds good on your end. Sounds great now. Good. Sorry. So, yeah, it was uh, input on both wires. Still too heavy on the mechanical side. So, I went and messed with the software. Again, guys, if it doesn't sound good at all at any point, let me know. I can make adjustments on the fly. I just dip out of the screen for a few seconds and we're good to go. I know this is like a really wonky color, but nonetheless. Well, it's, oh, I rigged that like crap. <laughs> that was, I've been drinking. <laughs> Boy, you ain't right in the head. <laughs> All right, there we go. Oh, you mean one of these guys? <laughs> We're ready. That's actually a good idea. It is such a good thing. Um, And actually, we did really well on that last year. So let's get into it. What do we got here? Hey, Mike, glad you could join us. <sighs> we got Paul. Thank you for joining us as well. Uh, before we get into it, for everybody that's here and watching, thank you very much. Always appreciate the support week in and week out. If you haven't liked the stream, that's real quick and easy little click. That helps immensely. If you guys want to go the extra mile and share it, also hugely helpful. Um, I didn't have a chance to kind of go through and do my usual pre-stream thing where, you know, like I, I post kind of a teaser like two hours ahead of time because oh, it was a, a brutally busy day for me at work in which 80% of my time was spent doing not my own things. <laughs> So, uh, it was a scramble to get here and get the new toy set up. So, it's going pretty good. Bob, Mass Big Baits, what's up? Glad you could join the stream. Um, you know, people that have been donating to the stream through YouTube, cannot tell you how much we express that. We're still marching away towards the next goal, which is shifted. We talked about that last week. Instead of doing the camera first, we're going to focus on getting him a PC so he can start helping out with the editing because my new career is taking me the direction that does not leave time to make videos like I used to. Um, I'm trying, but I'm failing miserably. So, we're going to make that work. Um, other than that, if you guys don't want to donate through YouTube, but you're feeling very generous, down in the video description below, there is a link to both my, well, my PayPal and the Venmo info is there. If you guys are willing to do it, we'd greatly appreciate it. Uh, but by all means, no pressure. So, let's do the recap for last weekend. Let's rock league more editing. Hey, how'd you, how'd you know? Did you know I hit... Champion won Division 3 last night. That puts me in the top 3.1% in the world or something like that. What's, what's that? Oh, just let me get that off there. Um, 
<laughs> Shut up, diamond. <laughs> Whatever. Platinum. It's even worse. I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, hey, David and Chris. All right, so we can recap. It's how we always start the stream, going over everything we did last weekend, which is actually way more important this week than any other week because it parlays perfectly into what we're talking about tonight, right? Finesse fishing tactics. So I'm going to let you start. We, well, I guess I did things a little different because the heat came in here hard in New England. For anybody watching that's not New England, yeah, it was brutal. It was close to 90 or over 90 with like absurdly high percentage of humidity. So we opted to go out Saturday late afternoon into the late, late night, early morning hours of Sunday. And then uh, with our buddy Nate, and then we back out Sunday. So how to go for a Saturday? Saturday was more your jam. Saturday was cool. <laughs> Saturday was cool. Saturday went really well. Um, it got a lot. Everything pretty much was either up in the grass or like, I don't know, let's say like three to four feet in the lily pads or on rocks. And throwing Texas rig craw. Pumpkin, uh, green pumpkin Texas Texas rig craw and dragging it out of the grass and I felt a thump and I felt some, what I thought was like a perch or something nipping at it same thing happened with that smallie yeah your PB smallie from yeah. last fall so I was like ah it's just a something I don't know what it is so I lift up and it was heavy set the hook didn't move <laughs> I thought it was a turtle because Nate had um a citizen working class zero citizen seven or no it was a smaller one the six six oh, and a half the big one that got bit in half. oh so it was the seven then yeah got bit in half by a snapping turtle so that's what i thought i hooked into and that was five and a quarter five and five pounds yours yours was 5.4 pounds 5.4 pounds right on the heels of that and i it's funny because so the whole point of everything we were doing this weekend was i got into an online tournament for to win a swim bait top seven weights would get a bait uh, so we were swinging for the fences, and I finally caught another five. It was five point, no, what the hell was it? No, five pounds, three ounces. So what is it, 5.18, something like that? Yeah. Didn't get a picture of it. We weighed it, threw it back. <laughs> caught a couple more that were just shy of three. Threw those back without taking a picture. No, actually, we got one. The, no, the short, it. fat one that was two pounds, 14 ounces. Yeah, that was insane. I don't remember when I caught that on. Was that the one on the DEF CON? I think it was the only one I caught on my big swim bait. I think it was, too. The uh, whole I think that might have been Chatterbait. I don't remember now. I, don't either. I, I think I only got bait. one moving bait every day. <laughs> right. uh, so, dude, I'm so sorry. I dropped the ball on those, but my wife said that she mailed them out. So they should be good to go. Uh, I will check with her after this. If they didn't go out yesterday, um, then I will definitely make sure they get in the mail first thing tomorrow. Sorry about that, Snatchy Panda. Um, yeah, so T-Rig Texas Craw. So after yeah, those big Texas. fish, it, pretty much we just worked the grass in like three to four feet of water and we weren't really getting much so I started ended up casting out to the very edge of it which is probably like five maybe six feet it varied anywhere from like three to six feet yeah. on the very outside edge of all the, le the yeah. weeds but I think it was the deeper deeper point is where I got bit again and it was like I don't know maybe two two and a half pounds yep and after that it, it started getting dark so we started throwing big baits and Again, the rat did work, dude. <laughs> he he kind of killed both myself. Oh, he wants you to show your shirt. He killed both me and my buddy Nate combined, just with the rat alone. Never mind the other fish he caught earlier in the day. Um, so that went that went really well. I caught a couple on the rat myself. Yeah, including including the most acrobatic smallmouth I've ever seen oh in my, my life. Oh my god! <laughs> I thought I lost it. Like I I heard it and I felt it before I heard it. I set the hook and it felt like it set it into literally nothing. And I thought I saw the rat skip across the water. I'm like, ah, I missed it. It could have, and then it came back. I don't know. Although. We don't know. So, <laughs> but whatever. And all of a sudden, the thing came like like a bottle rocket out of the water twice. And I'm like, wait, what? And I reel into it. And I'm like, oh my God, I have it. Yeah. <laughs> and I got to the boat. It was probably like a pound and a half. It wasn't big. That was funny. And then uh, she came unbuttoned. And we just kind of kept doing that. And we, we tried a bunch of different things, man. We worked that rat hard. Nate was working a variety of different crank downs and wakes. You stuck to the rat pretty much the whole time. Yeah, I was like, I'm not giving anything. I'm, I'm yeah, I'm using this rat the whole time. Yeah. Because it, it always paid works. off. So you outfished the crap out of us. I tried a couple of different wakes. I ended up sticking the rat too, because that was clearly they wanted the ladder knock. Um, 
that's pretty much the gist of it. Like we went until two thirty in the morning into Sunday, and it just didn't really pan out. It's funny, like nothing. There was no real consistency other than earlier in the day on that T rig, and yeah, then yeah. for a narrow window, there's like two little narrow windows with that rat. Yeah, where it went off pretty well, huh? Eleven o'clock. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's just like clockwork, man. Um, show off your shirt first before we get any further. Mike wants to see it two strokes. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, we were throwing that rat. <laughs> so many people call it that. <laughs> yeah, it is a very, very bright rat. Um. So Sunday, we went. We, we actually tried going out to a different place. We both needed to sleep in because we didn't get home till three thirty. Everything was said and done. Did we go get food? I don't forget. Oh yeah, we stopped at the gas station. Did we? Yep. I got you got like three chicken salad sandwiches or something. I was I. wondering where they <laughs> came from. I found them this morning. Oh my god! <laughs> Last night I was like, "What? The fuck did these did you not eat them when you were home?" Apparently not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's amazing. So. Uh, yeah, like all said and done, I remember seeing four something before I finally fell asleep. Woke up at 11. He woke up just behind me. Hey, Panda. Glad you could join us, buddy. Um, I was like, yeah, let's go whenever you're ready. So we, I think we actually left town about one o'clock and tried to go to a different lake. <laughs> Swamped. Happen. There's people parked illegally all over the place. We yeah. passed one other pond that we know. It was actually the same place we were at on Saturday. And there was only three cars. So we're like, well, we don't want to go back there. There's another place like past that, but we'll check it out. You had to drive right by the boat launch. See how it looks as we're driving by. We drove by. There's only one boat left. So two guys left in the 20 minutes since we had first drove past. It was perfect. Yeah. Like, All right. Well, we're going here. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm glad we did. Oh yeah. So for this online tournament, I, it was best three. I had my five pound, three ounce and they do it by pounds ounces for their online tournament. Um, I had that two pound 14 ounce, but there's a, you need a minimum of three pounds. So I was trying to swing for the fences at first. And then we got to one spot that I know really well. And I had it rigged already. I was like, you know what? I'm going to fire the shaky head at it. Literally first cast. I got smashed. And every single fish the rest of the night was hitting that weird. I didn't feel a single bite, but the moment I lifted up and they had it, they were sprinting like literally all out as fast as they could run. It's like, oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Try and sit into one it to catch them, up to it. One of them, he, I remember watching, he lifted up his line. There was nothing. And then all of a sudden his line went probably 30 feet the other way. I'm like, <laughs> whoa, dude, <laughs> there's a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. Um, Every fish was like that. It was nuts. And I caught one I thought was going to be like, yeah, this is going to be a wear. And I got... That was, um, I think it was only two pounds, 12 ounces. What that one was, I don't remember. but dude, when he turned and ran, he stripped line. Like he was a five. Mm -hmm. It was ridiculous. And you know, I was running my main shaky head set up as 10 pound braid to 10 pound floral. So I don't really have it that light at all. And he just turned and dug and sprinted strip line. And I was like, yeah, yeah, this is it. And we get him in the boat. We're like, what the hell? Yeah, but, he was tiny. He was like, well, not tiny, but he was. Not what he was looking for. He fought twice in his weight class. It was nuts. They all did that day. Yep. And that, that, like, the rest of that day was highly predictable. Rocks, shady side. Now we're, what, three straight days into that heat wave? Although, technically, Friday doesn't count, like, officially as a heat wave because it didn't reach 90. But it was close enough. Yeah. Um. So, by that point, I mean, water temp was still only 75 degrees, where we're fishing the majority of the time. So I fired it. I was like, you're looking at the conditions. It's kind of like mid-afternoon at that point. I'm like, well, there's a nice shade behind that rock now. First catch right at it. Catch a fish. Next rock, see the same conditions. Throw it at it. Cast at it. And it was literally like that the rest of the day. Any hard structure, not vegetation. They flipped the script in 24 hours. They came out the veggies, went for hard structure on the rocks, on the shady side, and shallow. Because we tried every deep rock spot that I know of there, and only one of them produced a fish, and it was tiny. Yeah. Our famous rock. Mm -hmm. That was the only offshore, offshore one. It's like 30 feet from the shore. Everything else is right against the bank. Yes, because I missed one and then you went back in. I don't know if it was the same fish, but you got a fish off of it. Yeah, that's right. Because you threw in the T-Rig yep. and I followed up with the shaky head and he smoked it. So fast. Wicked fast. I didn't even have time to set the hook by the time it hit the bottom. It was already running with it. <laughs> I couldn't set the hook on it. So that was kind of like, I said this in a couple, like the last two streams, right? We talked about like all three phases of the spawn and then like specifically post spawn a little bit last week so 
you have to look everywhere and you have to be prepared for both ends of the spectrum which is why we're talking about finesse tactics today because i had how many big baits tied on i brought 14 rods and i think nine of them no 10 of them had big stuff and then the other ones were all finesse and i ended up smashing them around on that shaky head that entire time oh and you got one off the bed that's right. I saw one smallmouth on a bed in that, that area lake by that point in the day was 76 degrees and he was locked on. Yeah. That was wild. Yeah. Um, but it was, it just became like, I mean, we tried, man. Like I, we went through one rock pile and I remember saying to you, I was like, okay, well I got three or four fish in the boat. Now I'm going to swing to something big and try and go for that fish. Fish for like 10 minutes and nothing. And it was like, you caught one. Like I caught one, you caught one. I caught two, you missed one. I caught my third. Or something like that. Or maybe it was my fourth. Just back and forth. So, like, we knew they were in there. They were all locked in. I was like, yep, okay, big bait time. Nothing. Big jig. Nothing. Texas rig. Got nipped. Literally my first cast of the shake it again. Another fish. Yep. Next rock pile. Another fish on the shake it. I'm like, all right. So, I just kind of stuck it out because I, mostly shaky hit is kind of numbers, but I've caught enough big fish on it to be like, yep, I, I feel confident that I can get both on this. And we just rocked it. That was kind of how the rest of the day went. I mean, he stuck to the craw because he was really swinging for the fences. Yeah. And I threw that when the opportunity was right. And oddly enough, the only fish that I got out of vegetation, not hard structure, was my biggest of the day. Three pounds, four ounces. That was my second weighable fish for that tournament. And then nothing the rest of the day except for shaky head fish. Yeah. Oh, except for that one chatterbait fish off the flat at the very yeah. end of the night. Which they should be out there. Yeah, it's getting close, man. Then this week. Night Stalker, I'm really sorry, buddy. I missed your comment. Um, I am not selling 603 shirts at the moment. If you missed this, you missed this. And Panda, I did get tanned. Yeah. <laughs> Monday again, too. Yeah. So um, that'd be the final recap for the weekend here. You went out Monday. What time did you go again? It was afternoon. Yeah, I think I waited till like, I don't know, maybe like 1 o'clock noon. Noon, one o'clock, somewhere around, maybe two. I don't remember. And the same conditions. Hot, sunny, bluebird Hot, skies. But very windy. That's right. Wind was ripping very on Monday. Windy. Yep. I got up there. I'm like, oh, man. Here we go. <laughs> I know what happens to the place that I go when it gets super windy, and I've caught some of the biggest fish of my life in those conditions on that lake. But it didn't pan out. <laughs> and I started throwing the square bill and chatterbait. I lost two chatterbaits. I'm switching back to floral <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah i got i think 15. that's what you had told like me th two or three hours and by the time i was so hot i had to i had to get off the water i didn't bring enough water you weren't wearing your fxr uv shirt i wasn't wearing my fxr uv shirt i was not were you wearing kyle's shirt i was wearing kyle's shirt. i don't remember if that's uv or not okay i'll have to double check i think you're right though hey chris thanks sure. for joining the stream bud 41 striper. Wow! Jeff, that's awesome. Damn. 41 striper. That's insane. Damn, that's good. That's a, a bait? giant. That must have been fun. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> that's a rock. Oh my god, there it goes. <laughs> um But yeah, they were all pretty much in the shade on the rocks. Like if I could find a rock that was in the shade, that's pretty much where they were. Yep. And I didn't really get anything. I didn't get anything in the lilies or the grass or anything like that backs the rocks again all all rocks what colors were you throwing i was throwing green pumpkin still mm -hmm. and they were switched to black and blue i was gonna switch to black and blue jig but i just didn't i don't know that it was working so if anything i would have switched to green green and orange because now we're kind of on that line where the orange starts coming to play a little bit more and that place is like moderate clarity so i mean well with the wind and everything it was kind of all gross Really? Yeah. It got Black and blue off. jig with a green trailer or vice versa probably would have been good. What I was thinking about, but I didn't. And I did throw a square bill and I caught one literally first cast with a square bill. Yep. And I'm like, ah, I don't have any pliers. <laughs> <laughs> so that was the only fish I, that's the only time I threw the square bill. And I just worked at that craw again for the rest of the day. And pretty much that was it. There was one I got off a tree. I worked a tree for probably 10 minutes. Which I actually filmed. Nice. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I, saw, I saw the stream. Yeah. yeah. So, I forget what I was doing, but I wasn't able to... Well, I was at work, I think. I don't know. I'll I don't know what the hell was going probably on. Probably posted on probably the 603 Bass TikTok. Yeah. Uh, Cam Yates. 
On Sunday at Winnie, I caught some good smallies on a spook and a three and a half largemouth on a frog under a dock. Nice, dude. I actually nice. know a few guys that did really well fishing up there shallow, uh, that general area over the weekend. Uh, and I think we're actually going to come up that way this weekend because we have to go meet a subscriber who is hooking us up with some PC parts for Andrew. Oh, yeah. Which is hugely appreciative. So uh, if I'm lucky, I might be able to meet the guy tomorrow after work. Um, so we can go somewhere different, but otherwise we may be on Winnie on Sunday, chasing largies. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No. 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 Not smallies. No. God. No. Good. But well, we could go somewhere else too, and then just make the drive back towards him. Either way. Ooh. Ooh. I have an idea. No, you don't want smallies though. We'll figure it out. I'm trying All to right. catch an eight-pound largemouth this year. That's my goal. Mister Window. Brownie Factory Monday. Fish were on bed, so I targeted post spawners. Caught a few cruising sight fishing with a drop shot and spy bait. Slow moving top water. Caught most of my fish. Best five, four point, fourteen point seven five. Nice, dude. That's pretty good on Monday. So I was thinking about that. I was trying to take tomorrow off to join my friend Dennis because he's going there tomorrow. Couldn't make it work. But here we go. And he'll probably smash them. And this weekend, that place should be like lights out. So good luck to anybody going there because it's probably going to be slammed. <laughs> Pretty much anywhere this weekend is going to be slammed. Yeah, weather's well, supposed to be really nice, like ideal. So, good luck to everybody. All right, that is the end of the recap. As usual, we went too long on it. It's 8.30. So, let's get into some finesse. Yeah, finesse. Ah, finesse tactics. Hand me the rod, please. <laughs> We're going to start with the shaky head because, obviously, that's the thing I just smashed with. Oh, this is my Wicked Custom Rods Ice Rod, which is going to make perfect work for the bait tank. So, we can do some demonstrations tonight. So, I keep my setup pretty simple when it comes to a shaky head. I don't remember. How often do you throw a shaky head? Aside from last year. Is that, like, was last year your first year you really started throwing it, or was that a couple I years ago? I really started throwing it last year, but I did do it a little bit in past years. Yeah. But last year was pretty much when I threw it with a robo worm. It was like, that was the money. I got you. I like it. <laughs> yep. So I keep it pretty simple. I've got just a zoom finesse worm. It's, I believe, five inches, maybe six inches. Let me bring that down. It might be easier to see there. Um, I like the VMC Ike heads. I'm pretty sure that's what this is. It's 3 16 That's like pretty much how I keep it. Uh, Gabriel, they are not at all strict whatsoever on lead in New Hampshire. They say they are, but me. Um, I keep it simple. Now, obviously, I'm using a nice setup, so I can't really demonstrate what I use. But for my typical setup for a shaky head, I just have a 7-foot medium, fast action, 10-pound braid to anywhere from 10 to 12-pound fluorocarbon, depending on, like, how hard and how deep the rocks are that I'm fishing and how big the rocks are. Like, if I'm fishing big boulders, I want 10-pound. And I'm going to tie my, my leader super long. I know that's heavier than my braid. But it's just for that added benefit of added safety and security around all that rock for the abrasion resistance. But as the name implies, that's all I'm doing, dude. I keep it simple. And I would say that this weekend I was doing more power finesse fishing, if anything, because I was working this thing fast. Yeah. <laughs> it was like I was flipping and pitching a jig to like every lay down I could see, but I was doing the shaky head. And this is kind of how I fish it. I mean, as it's, it's a little hard because it's right in front of us, but as it's coming towards me, I just kind of lift it, lift it, lift it. But with the angle of my line, I'm getting it to come up and come back down on the head and come up and come back down on the head. So it's, it's coming up and sitting and the tail is really what's doing the most of that action. But as it comes across, you know, it just kind of dances along the bottom. Hopefully you guys can see that. Actually, it does look pretty good, doesn't it? Yeah, I'm about it. I like that. That's fantastic. I think there's black part go down here, white. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. Well, so what I'll end up doing is I'll, I'll paint like the whole bottom like a matte white. So everything on it stands out still, but it doesn't reflect the light like the glass is right now. But, you know, aside from that, you know, shaky head with a heavier weight, you could probably get it to stand. It kind of does with the lighter weight, 316 ounce. Might do a little bit differently when you're down like in deeper water. But, you know, for the most part, dude, that's it. I will throw this thing almost strictly around hard structure, especially rock. Yeah. There's something about a shaky head and rock that just kills it. Yeah. And it's like the next best thing to go to if they're not hitting a jig. I will. This is my one-two punch when I know they're in and around rocks and they're feeding out the bottom. Jig first, shaky head second. I'm not even sure what I would consider third behind that because usually if you're not getting bit on one, you get bit on the other. Yeah. And some days they both. Texas rig, but I mean, 
honestly go from big jig to that, something's gonna something's gonna bite. Right. So you had just mentioned what your favorite bait is for a shaky head. Mm -hmm. But go ahead and elaborate, because is, is that the only bait that you like to throw now, or is there another one you like to throw aside from the Zoom Finesse Worm, which I know we, we both throw a lot of? Yeah, I, I do like that. I do like the Robo Worm. Do you have any down here? No, I don't. They're on my boat, unfortunately. But I think it's a seven inch worm. Yes. The seven inch. It's just, it's pretty much the same thing as that. It's just a little longer. You get a little more out of the tail. And that's pretty much, yeah. So it's just a little bit longer than this. Yeah, because I think that's a six inch. And they're a little skinnier, I think. So you get a little more whip of the tail. But I mean, this this actually makes it look nice too. Pretty much do the same thing. It's just a little bigger profile. Doesn't mean you're going to catch bigger fish, but. I mean, I've never really caught a big fish on shaky head. Have you? Yeah, um, four and three quarter, I think, is my biggest okay, on it. Actually, I, I want to say I even caught a five on a shaky head one time, but my memory is not great on that. I've never caught a big fish on shaky head. It's typically not a big fish bait, but it, it has the potential. I've caught threes. Tons of threes. Tons and tons of threes. I know at least a couple of fours, but yeah, I mean, for the most part, it's more like a fast-moving, kind of like power finesse approach where you can cover a lot of water really fast. You can cover hard structure effectively because you can weed it to exposed. So the hook is, you know, easy enough to come out, but doesn't get snagged on much stuff. And that round head slips through rocks like really, really nice. Right. And especially the way you typically fish it, you're constantly popping it versus dragging it. So you're less susceptible to get stuck in something unless you're like me and really unlucky. And I you just have to drag them. Do you? Yeah. I, I almost do a little pop. When I get to a rock, I pop it up over the rock. I almost strictly pop it, hmm. pop it, lock it. Okay. Um, and you're very welcome, Gabriel. Hopefully that works. Sports Central just saw the two biggest bass I've ever seen today swimming together, seven and a half to ten plus. So ridiculous sounding, I know. Only but once, and then swam around for the rest of the time. Where were you? Now you don't have to tell me the exact lake, but like, what state? Like what air? Like what region? I'm just curious where the hell you saw two fish that size. So that is insane. Yeah, that's pretty big. The only time I've seen two giant fish like that swimming together was when you caught that seven for the second time and you told me where the bed was mm -hmm. and I went there with my kid the next day yeah, trying to get him to catch one of those because it was a four, a five, and then the heavy seven. It was a six and a quarter. So, yeah. And a seven and a half plus. And then what, you got a four or five that was with him too? There was three. Yeah, there was it three was messed up. Another, like, it was like a three and a half. And then there were, so there's two beds right next to each other. There was a three and a half and like a four. Yep. And then a six and a, and the six and a quarter, which I got Jeff to catch. And then the seven and a half. That's insane. And I saw it. I went there the next day, the very next day with my kid. Huge. And Kyle went and he saw him too. <laughs> All three of us tried to go there to catch it. <laughs> I didn't. I, I tried to let my kid fish it. <laughs> yeah. Legs region, I swear. No, dude, I absolutely uh, wholeheartedly believe you. I know that there's big fish up there. I know a guy that caught and released a fish that tied the state record from the lakes region about eight years ago. Big lakes, big fish. Yeah. They're in there somewhere. They got the forage, they got the rum. Um, you're very welcome, Brian. So next on the list for finesse stuff. And this is Dragon. I dragon eco oh sorry, Bill Gibson. Dragon. A dragon Nico and his magic on big fish. Nico's a little bit different though, depending on what you're doing. Where at like shaky head, I mean, I mean I drag it from time to time, but I, I don't know. I feel I way more confident in actually just popping it along. And I'm not working it hard. Like what you just saw in the tank, that's literally what I'm trying to do down below. It's 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 small, it's subtle hops, but I'm trying to make the whole bait really work inside of that small, you know, uh footprint that it's in. Paul, go away. <laughs> um, next up, because we actually have a couple of these baits that I really want to cover. This is kind of, well, if you guys saw him in the chat, Mike Klazen, this is his absolute favorite bait. The dude cannot stop talking about it. He is the guru on the Ned Rig. Oh, <laughs> look at it. So, dude, look at how well that stands. That's a thing of beauty. Ned Rig kills it for both large mouth and small mouth but especially small mouth and this is kind of one of those baits that like it's the new version of wacky rig senko is really the best way to put this mm -hmm. and i feel bad saying it but dude it just straight out catches fish and 
you can get it like fish on these almost the entire year too this is damn near an ice out to ice in bait oh it definitely is it excels and especially for smallmouth there's something about that stupid thing sitting there just like that the smallmouth comes up through and they just absolutely cannot resist you don't have to do a damn thing you just sit here and do like that i want to bite it you would <laughs> You can fish it around a lot of different things, and one of the things that I couldn't wrap my head around for the first year I fished it is actually how well it works in vegetation too. It's gonna get hung up, and I know they offer like different, um, you know, weedless style ones. They have like wire guards, they have like a fiber brush guard, um, they have like extra wide gap style hook, so you can almost like tech expose it. But don't always have to do that. You could get this in the weeds and like snap it out, not yeet it out, just snap it out. You're just trying to get it to pop out, and sometimes that reaction bite alone is enough to get fish to bite. Um, not even vegetation, too. Just in the rocks. How many times have I been stuck and yeeted this thing out of the rocks and immediately get smoked by a smallmouth? The smallmouth is just sitting there staring at it, waiting for it to move. And as soon as you move, it's just like, nope, you're not going anywhere. Yep. Dude, I'm not going to lie. I am beyond impressed with this hook. This is the new tungsten Ned Rig hook from Beast Coast Fishing. Mm -hmm. I literally just got these last Friday. And that looks perfect. It's a round head, whereas all the other ones I had were like, you know, just regular mushroom tip. And uh, that's a, shut up. That's a one tenth ounce. And dude, that that's literally standing perfect. I have I have yeah. zero tension on that line. But Ned Rig is killer. If you're not throwing it, you should. And don't be afraid to go wicked light. Like my buddy DJ 3D underscore fishing on Instagram. He was the one that introduced me to the Ned Rig when we were, went to the first time we were fished together was the New Hampshire Brownie Factory. And he kicked the crap out of me. Who? DJ. Oh, yeah. In no time. I'm like, what in the hell are you throwing? Ned Rig. Never heard of it? I'm like, no, it's literally the first time I've even seen it. Never like, never mind heard of it. Um, <laughs> he was like, oh, here, let me introduce you to this. <laughs> As he catches fish after fish after fish. We didn't catch anything of like any crazy size. But dude, he was throwing that on six pound test and he slayed it. And he was throwing a 115th ounce weight. I can't go that low yet. I have a rod coming that will allow me to do stuff like that. For the most part, I just stick to one tenth ounce, and it works killer. And I'm actually really, really happy about these Beast Coast hooks because if I can here, hold up a second, if I can take the bait off, those TRDs are a pain. I don't know if you can see that from that there. I can't get too close, or the um, I'm gonna throw the camera out of focus. Don't get too close. The bait keeper on that is perfect. It, there was one that I had before that was like a knockoff brand with bait keeper almost looked like it was soldered onto the hook shank, but this actually is buried up into the head. It's molded in there. So it's far less likely to break. You can get a hell of a lot more mileage out of that than you otherwise would. Yep. And it's like, it's a really nice hook. It's, um, I forget what hook he has, but it's like that, that, um, like black glossy finish. What the hell is, um, it's like a black nickel. Oh, tungsten on glass does not sound good. Um, ooh, TV 18. Good luck, dude. Try that thing. Chris said, try that thing fishing with Brian. Caught most of my fish with it. Nice. Uh, oh. Definitely work. Oh, you're going there tonight for an online tournament, TV 18. <sighs> if, dude, if I were going there at night, I would be going for post spawn largemouth, which they should be like on fire right now. I would probably go up to the bridge at the north end never and I'd work. Did you, well, we got close, didn't we? We got close, but I never went up that far. That's all right. Just fish. I would, I would either fish around the island, probably on the southern end would be my guess. Working further and further up into that grassy mats, especially with a rat up there, dude, you'll probably smoke them or up by the bridge. And I'd work all around the bridge, but like main lake side of it. In and around that. They're going to be funneling in and out of there as they come up to feed and come back out as they want to go back to deep water later in the night. Like any of those transition areas would be like key, and especially that thick vegetation south of the island. Like that's what, those would be my two starting points that I work from there. If they're not in the veggies, then you know where all the rocks are, then go work the rocks. Um, Tim, have you guys dabbled in Dragon Carolina rigs? Not on the finesse topic, but would love to hear your discussion on it. We crushed them for a derby last weekend on it and they wouldn't eat finesse. That's the reason why I bring up finesse tonight, because this is that time of the year where it could literally be either end of the spectrum. Like all last weekend, all post spawn, 
Not no, not this past weekend. The weekend before, yeah, when it was raining, before, yeah. we crushed them on jigs and big T Rex. We didn't need to do anything else. You did. I did. Okay. Well, other people had opportunities. <laughs> um. And then this weekend, it was finesse. Like, we tried throwing, like, even moderately sized, like, bigger presentations, and they just weren't having it. So that's why I really wanted to cover finesse, because it is very good to have as another tool. For the most part, you can get away with not needing it this time of the year. Most of the time, big baits will get it done. Yep. Just bigger, traditional presentations will get it done. But if you want to make sure you can go out and never leave fish behind, you got to have both ends of the spectrum ready, especially now. They can be really fickle from day to day. Uh, but specifically for Dragon Carolina rigs, that to me still can be finesse. Because you can do a lot of different things with that. You don't have to use a one ounce weight the whole time. No, and you don't have to throw a big bait on it either. No, you don't. You could literally throw this on there yep. with a quarter ounce weight. That's a finesse setup. It's a, it's a finesse worm. It's literally a zoom finesse worm. Um, you could throw, <laughs> I know some guys that throw teeny tiny swim baits on basically like flipping hooks so they don't lose them that easily. It's like borderline, right? You're throwing a finesse bait in like a moderately heavy presentation, but you're using the advantage of the power while presenting it in a finesse manner to get down into areas where that would be beneficial, but being able to get them back out when you're done too. Right. So I, I love throwing Carolina rig. I, I mean, you saw the baits I just got. Those big old wobbly dongers. Yeah, I'm ready to. I've never thrown Carolina rig. Oh, you're gonna love it. Um, actually, a subscriber. I hope we'll be still here. David Richardson just hooked me up with some uh, half ounce and one ounce rattling brass weights, so I don't have to throw any beads on my setup. Yeah, it's gonna be sick. Mm -hmm. Um, it's actually funny. I have some already. <laughs> when I was throwing in my Carolina rig box, I one of them dropped, and I was like, "Wait a minute!" I picked it up, like. Oh my god, I already had some. <laughs> I, I say I have some. I literally had two. So that's some. Uh yeah, dude. No, Carolina rig is I think slowly becoming more and more overlooked outside of the tournament scene. There's a lot of techniques that are getting overlooked now. Everyone's all oh big swim baits and oh bigger baits and bigger this, bigger that. Yeah. And Sankos, it's like I mean, I don't know why it's, anybody would get distracted so many, by big baits. There's so many different finesse. Yeah, I know. But there's so many different finesse techniques that still catch giant fish. And it, it just seem like they're getting they're getting phased out, which they shouldn't be. Yeah. See, <laughs> finesse. That's, a nice rock. That's, that's my new setup from Lou's. That's a... Dude, feel how light that is. It's a 7-Eleven rod with a Super, Super Duty 300 on it. With a two with a two and a half ounce bait hanging off of it too. And it still feels so good. Talon! Hey buddy, thanks for joining. Yeah, that's um I get it. Like he, I absolutely agree with him, and he's 110% right. A lot of guys are starting to overlook a lot of these like killer just traditional presentations, and especially finesse stuff, because everybody's swinging into that big bait thing. I'm no different. <laughs> Which isn't a problem, not even a little bit. I I already have a second rod on the way, specifically for big bait stuff from Wicked Custom Rods. Yeah. And me too. <laughs> it still wasn't enough. I bought a third. <laughs> That's the one you're holding right there. Dude, it was on sale. Like plus my you know, my deal I get because I'm sponsored by Lose and the reel was on sale. So I was like, guess what I'm buying. <laughs> so I sent me a picture the other day, I'm like Oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to throw it. It's it's like a it's an amazing thing. Well, Talon says, problem is finesse is so annoying at times. It depends on what you're doing. And that's one I mean, of the other things I want to cover. catching fish all the time. The problem, like... Sometimes it doesn't catch the fish. Sometimes they don't no. want something that small. Right. And actually, I want Talon, I want you to elaborate, please. When you say it's annoying, how is it annoying? Is it because you think it's slow or because it can be slow at times? Admittedly, in my I'm opinion, a, it's I'm really... I'm a slow fisherman and sometimes I, I mean, I do get annoyed with fin finesse sometimes. Yeah, but, but it's I just rare. feel like I know. That's the thing. Like I think a lot of people think when they when they think finesse, they think like, hold, don't hold, <laughs> hold the line. <laughs> I'm just very slow for being someone that's so freaking off the wall, back and forth, off everything. I fish extremely slow, which has made me a better angler because you've been kicking my ass and I have to slow down and keep up. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes I, I get it though. Sometimes finesse fishing, it's like oh my god, 
I just want to pick up a freaking half ounce jig and I want to go freaking toss the shit. And, and drop the hammer on and fish? And drop the hammer on fish. Some, I mean, some days, like, throwing drop shot, it's like, ugh, do this all day and just wait. And, yeah. But sometimes you can work it fast. If they're hitting it fast, then it gets fun. Which is, in my opinion, more often than not. It's rare that I feel like I really have to work for a finesse bite. Um, yeah, you kind of drop it down. Pretty much by the time it gets down there, they're usually either like on it or you work it for a couple of seconds, then they're on it. Right, which most of the time we can get done. Yeah. What, what did Talon just say? So my, oh, so it's so much slower usually. I much prefer power fishing and actively looking for them. Versus throwing a square bill and chatterbaits and spinnerbaits. Well, it's kind of like you, though. Then that's not even finesse fishing that you're talking about specifically. You're talking about moving baits versus literally anything else. Because what you're talking about can be the same can be said for throwing a jig or a Texas rig or literally anything that's not one of those moving baits. Right. So, I don't know. Talon, I think you need a perspective adjustment. <laughs> and I mean that in a really good way. <laughs> Eight twelve. Where was that? That's insane. Who In said Carolina, that? Carolina on a river. Zach. <laughs> Carolina like a few years back. Eight twelve. That's insane. Did I? Oh, I tied that too far again. Damn it. So one of the Maybe things. You just have more confidence in your square bills Ow. and your chatterbaits and spinnerbaits. I mean, they do you do catch a lot of fish. And you do catch. They, they do target bigger fish. That they do. Is one hundred percent. But there's also times where we've gone out and thrown finesse and had 20 plus pound day, days. You mean like six straight weeks like last year? Weeks <laughs> and we weren't even fish like actually a couple the, the the beginning half of that stretch, we were not fishing that slow, especially me. He was, and he was doing pretty good. But even backing that up two weeks, I was fishing finesse. It was the same bait, yeah. but we were not fishing that slow. I only had to wait like five or six seconds after it hit the bottom, and then thump. I mean, and, we, but yeah, at the beginning, like towards the end, we were, oh, no, towards the end, we had to fish real slow. Yeah, but now we're talking the water was like 37 degrees. Yeah, I mean, we were, we had our baits down there for a couple minutes. Right, so that's to be expected at that time of the year when you're talking about water temps that cold. Yeah, but in the bulk of the year, it's usually pretty good water temps. Yeah. And then there's some other things we're going to talk about that are like super finesse that you can move fast. It's actually one of the first things that someone talked about inside the chat. But yep. continuing on with things, my absolute go-to, above all else, is the old drop shot. And this is something that you can fish both slow and fast. Did I put that through or did I forget to do it? No, I didn't. But I didn't pull the knot right. I was like watching my hook and it's like not sitting the way I need it to. Yeah. When you throw in drop shot, make sure your knot is good. Your pollen or not. Yeah, or else your bait's not going to look right. Yeah, you're not. If, you're, if your hook is, is down. Mint. You're oh. going to lose so many fish. Make so, sure it's... it's I'll show you. I grabbed the wrong hook. So I'm, I'm this is way too big of a hook right now. So my bait's not going to sit right on it. And I had to adjust it. But I was trying to throw a bigger bait the other day. That's why I have this. I just This is the hook that I grabbed. If I can move this. I'm going to break that glass. So anyway, that is about as close to perfect as you're going to get. And this is the Beast Coast Magic Flick. This is what sets this bait apart. Is that tail quiver. Which it's sideways. Come on. There you go. Yeah. Show them the magic. See that? Every time you flick it, it's like the tail wants to bend in on itself. Drop shot can be both the slowest and fastest finesse method of fishing. Look at that. Absolutely. Yeah. That's just about perfect. And when you get it down and it sits just like that, man, that alone can be money right there, too. It's not that different from a Ned Rig. You don't have to do much with it. And you also got, you also got to think you got current playing with it. And you got, it could be grass down there that's bouncing off stuff. And get that right there yeah is that it's gonna be oh, moving, yeah. moving pretty natural so and then to his point about current one of the things we learned remember we were bed fishing a few years ago like specifically we were out there to film on beds and we were fishing filming um i was with trying josh. to get footage for the magic flick with josh yep yeah and i was down underneath we're in a lake that had at this i mean there is some current but not where we were there's no inlet up at the end we were um at but just between the boat traffic and the wind when i was underwater it looked like that lake had current Yep. And we could see it in the bait. I mean, otherwise, there was no... It was only a little wind. It was breezy. I wouldn't even say it was just from boat traffic, if anything. Yeah, it wasn't really... It was really nothing out there. And just from the churning of that, it wasn't even that bad that day. Like, that bait was flickering. Dead stick. And I know it's because I had a, a GoPro literally inches from this thing. 
in four feet of water. I was down there holding the GoPro myself some days. And you can still see it where it's dancing. So like that that's what I like about the flick more than anything else. You don't have to do much with it and it kind of does the work for you. Um, but to kind of get back on topic here, specific to drop shot fishing for finesse, it's one of my favorite things to do because you you can it does everything. It's the vertical finesse fishing tactic that you can do. Yep. Um, getting some interference. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I hope not. Jarvis or Wi-Fi? My phone's not doing nothing. Well, keep me posted if it keeps doing it. Sorry. Okay. Um, my phone out. <laughs> obviously, it is phenomenal. For fishing vertically, right? Like, it doesn't get any better. If you're out there video game fishing, you're looking straight down, like, it just doesn't get any better than that. Other than maybe a spoon or a blade bait. But you can drop fast. You can throw a ton of different weights on there. For me, myself, depending on... I know a lot of guys that try and go as light as they can. I am on the opposite end of the direction, on the spectrum there. I like to go as heavy as I can because, for me, I want the weight on the bottom. Yeah. So when I'm moving, the only thing I'm moving is the bait. I think the I think the lowest I'll go is three eighths. I will go quarter ounce on dead slick calm conditions, but on that I agree with you. Three eighths. Still, I still feel more confident with three eighths because then I can still feel it. Yep, and especially with tungsten. Oh yeah, like it's ridiculous. You wouldn't think that something as small as that quarter ounce tungsten weight could make that big of a difference between lead or steel. You feel literally everything, depending on what rod you have. You will literally feel everything. You can feel it dragging from sand to rock to grass. You'll feel it all. When you know when it gets like ripply in the sand from just like current in general, you can feel yourself. Like obviously you can feel it like dragging, but you can like feel the contour of it, not mm -hmm. just from the rod. Like it's weird. You can feel it as it slides down from picking up like a little bit more speed, and then as it slows down, as it climbing back up. Like it, it's ridiculous how much more a tungsten weight transfers knowledge of bottom composition to you than anything else especially on a tungsten because there's nothing else between that and the bottom you know there's no skirt material there's no trailer nothing it is just 100 percent pure tungsten to a wire leader to or whatever the thing is that you pinch your weight in straight to your line yeah so it, it's about as good as it gets but you can still bomb the thing and you can cover water fast with that we <laughs> We were, we were up on the St. Lawrence. We were throwing, we had one ounce weights. <laughs> one, one and a half ounce weights? One ounce. We were saying, we almost, I think. No, we, we had one ounce weights and we were saying we, we thought we needed oh, one and a half. Yeah, one and a half ounce weights. The current was ripping. We were throwing. You've never experienced anything like that, except no. for maybe in the salt. We were throwing, well, we were throwing that bait. And we also had a couple other baits that we were throwing. With one ounce weight, we were throwing it. 100 to 150 feet in front of the boat at least yep in anywhere from 50 to 60 feet of water by the time it hit it, bottom it hit bottom with a one ounce weight it was below the boat <laughs> <laughs> to vi do video game fish straight vertical fishing we had to lob it as far as we could like he said 100 to 150 feet depending on what the wind was going to do to us and by the time it got down in 50 to 60 feet of water again straight below your feet yeah could not believe it insane with a one ounce weight that's ridiculous. That if that doesn't tell you how fast that current was moving, I don't know what to tell you. It had to have been like six, six knots. Yeah, five, five, six knots. That thing put the Altrex to the test. That Altrex was on a hundred, and it was cranking. <laughs> Those batteries were not happy with us. No, every night we had to charge it. Well, obviously, but yeah, from pretty much dead to yeah, it was nuts. So aside from the magic flick, what is your? Well, yeah, you, what is your favorite drop shot weight? So. Answer that first, and then I want to talk bait about or bait. bait. Sorry, I don't know what I said. Um, yeah, favorite bait, and then from there, one of the things I really want to touch upon is bait size because that is an another often overlooked thing that's going to become very, very important in a very short amount of time. And I don't know that we're going to come back to this again before that transition where bait size is key. But we'll get to that first. You favorite baits other than the flick? I like the Z-Man. Is it the trick shot? Yes, the Z-Man trick shot, and that. It's got the stretch just like every other Z-Man, the, the, the last tech or whatever it yep. is. They just, they hold up. They stay on there forever. You don't have to go through as many as these will get ripped off and tossed. And I mean, the Z, I mean these are still probably one of my favorite. They definitely 100% are one of my favorite drop shot baits. But the Z-Man is just, if I don't have these, I'm going to go with the Z-Man. 
because they just they stretch a freaking mile you don't lose as many right and one of the biggest complaints i hear from people about any of the z-man elastec material is it stiff like there's they're small swim baits i forget what they're called the uh minnow z i think yeah like they're they're pretty stiff you know there's not a whole lot of action to them but those trick shots the trick shots are they've very, got good action yeah, to them because they're, they're a lot thinner they got a beautiful taper go from main body back to the tail so it allows that almost as it's, much action as the flick but it's, it's kind of hard to beat the like flick that. it's almost that shape just i think it's a little skinnier but it has to be skinnier for that elastic that elastic plastic to actually do what it, they want it to do right but this is just a bulkier profile and these get absolutely hammered there's something about that tail that derek there the owner of beast coast was able to just nail perfect like yeah. you know it's got a natural very easy quivering action to it and I mean, you can see us, we like watching it <laughs> <laughs> like it doesn't take much to get that thing to dance it's a perfect bait and more than anything especially in new england that's about as perfect as you can get for matching the hatch especially for the main forge that small mouth like the target that's a three and a half inch bait like that is money for most of the year but there's definitely an area in the year where you need a different size bait but before i do that I want to talk about my favorite baits. Obviously, Magic Flick from Beast Coast is number one. Um, second to that, I'm going back to some of my favorite worms. Actually, ooh, want to hand me that shaky head, please? Before I had the flick, I did this. Zoom Finesse Worm, 5-inch. And if I wasn't doing that, then I was doing the Reaction Innovation Flirt Worm, 5-inch. Robo Worm, 5-inch for me, yeah. not the 7-inch. That I didn't start doing until he started doing it last year. Um, there is another one. Um, it's a zoom worm. Throw a little swim bait on there too. Yep. I like throwing like, like these little swim baits right here. Three, like a, anywhere from a three to three and a half inch swim bait, whether it be the key tick, um, swing impact fat, the easy shiners also killer. Like those things with speed shads from Bass Pro. Like those are also awesome. Um, what are some other swim baits that I have done? There's some Jack ones from Jackal that are really good. Oh, the, there's Jackal. Drop okay. shot baits. What the hell yeah. is that? Um, we were throwing the hell out of them up in the St. Yeah, Lawrence. We, yeah, we were. Crosstail shad. Yes, those are. That's amazing. another killer drop shot bait. There's so many different things you can do, and then again, different sizes too. So not just presentation. Like it's not all about little magical flicking worms. Swim baits also killer. Yeah, Kitex. Did I say Kitex again? Damn it. <laughs> um, David Toll. Sorry, didn't see you there. Thank you for joining us, buddy. Same with you, fishing mode and Dylan. Oh, what's up? Um, those are all like my favorites, but then like, there's a certain point when you go from like right about now into that deep summer pattern specifically for small mouth and yeah, actually even drop, um, large mouth too, but really for small mouth where that's too small and you won't get bit. Mm -hmm. Like I've literally had it where I've gone out like on a Friday and then back out on a Saturday or like, you know, within two days, a couple of instances over the years. And on the first of those two days, they're munching on that flick all day long or anything even kind of close to that size and i'll go back a couple days later can't get bit on it i'm watching my graph fish comes flying in looks at it and just scoots right off go to another one same deal sees it scoots right off and just over and over again the moment i switch to a five inch bait it could be literally the same color because i usually start with a green pumpkin I, I think it's the chronic from beast coast um most of the time I'll go to another green pumpkin, but I'll go to five inch and I'll watch that fish come right in and smoke. It doesn't even stop, just inhales it bite after bite after bite. And I'll lose that. And I'll go back to the flick and I'll drop it down. They won't touch it. And it'll be like that for like the next two months. So in the middle of the summer, at some point it transitions from that smaller bait to a bigger bait. So just be cognizant of that. If you're trying to up your game with finesse fishing, especially a drop shot size is definitely key to a certain point. Tom, yes, the KVD drum shot is a uh, dream shot is another really good one. Bill Gibson, here's a good one to answer. Um, and actually, who? Hang on. Oh, I almost stuck myself in a hook. Where did I just see? Oh, Dylan, have you ever tried Texas rigging finesse worms on drop shots? Power shotting. Yeah. You've tried that yep. several times. Yep. Um, yeah, power shotting works pretty well. It's just a bigger, heavier, instead of using eight pound, six pound leader, you're using 15, 20 pound and fishing it in heavy cover of grass. And you're just bigger baits, bigger weights. Yep. 
and do a lot of it with for like largies. I've tried it with worm. flukes and had moderate success. I'm trying to do it more with like a seven inch finesse worm. Um, you can even do it with a Senko, but yeah, you're literally, you're still tying the same thing, tie Palomar knot. And you, and I think some guys will still go braid to leader, but it's a really good thing where <clears throat> if you just have straight floral, it's going to work great for that too. It, almost think of it like a jig, you know, like you can just pitch it into cover, but now you're keeping your bait up off the bottom and it's a weedless presentation the whole way through. So depending on how they're relating into that grass, you can play with your tag length. You can keep the bait where you think you want it to be kind of like a Carolina rig too but now you're like you're guaranteeing that your bait is up off the bottom which can be good or bad depends on what you're trying to accomplish um what the hell blind to binder you should check out striper sniper snake worms i use them for trailers on bucktails and from brittle legs but they would those. be great for bass i haven't seen those they how do they look pretty good they look pretty good how big are they i don't know i've seen them though i know i have what else we got i here? was looking for them hey I dan to go uh fluke Fluke fishing. Oh, yeah, but yeah, yeah. I was watching some. I don't remember who was on YouTube I was watching, but they were using them and they were killing them. You should be watching those 603 bass guys. I hear they're pretty cool. Yeah, they're pretty sweet. <laughs> All right, let's change up a little bit. We got two more things I really want to cover. And they're a bit on the heavier side of things, both heavier and faster moving. This one, Andrew gets to speak to almost exclusively. What am I doing? For a number of reasons. Because, despite how well I've done on this, oh. he has absolutely smoked me on it, <laughs> and it's like it's not even close. And I've I, I've already got my second biggest fish of the year this year was a five point one eight. Oh my god, no, I do. I literally caught two five. No, five point one three was that largemouth down in Cape Cod. Yep. Second trip out this year. Oh, on that. On this, um, I don't know why I'm just not tying like a regular knot. Just a regular knot. It's too late. I'm already committed. What are you Palomar. Oh, yeah. It's just good habit. Damn. Damn. Okay, well, I messed it up, but whatever. Just tie. Just, just come on. Fish mode, you forgot an S. Come what on. do you write? It's ass with a B. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did I tell you about Nancy? No. So I have a mannequin at work. It's a lady. A lady yep. mannequin. I put her on top of my cabinet in the shop. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> she naked. <laughs> Uh, oh nice daniel dude have fun up there champlain that'd be fun all right um so there's two more things i really want to cover for finesse and this is more like what would you even call this not like power finesse but it's it's like a bulky finesse it's on the fine line it's like but i mean <laughs> we're fishing really small stuff light duty stuff like we're throwing it on finesse it's finesse no matter what you call it. it's finesse yeah. beast ghost hustler with a teeny tiny little swim bait here you go buddy this is all you so the thing that i'm really excited to show this about is if we can get it but i don't know if the hair is going to react right in this because it's warmer water that hair is supposed to, hair is like ideal for colder water but i don't think it's really going to matter in this case the whole purpose of having a like hair jig or just hair in general is it's supposed to help breathe and if i were smart i would have tied on a brand new jig because that one has seen hell and back already. <laughs> so that hair is not doing the best. But Beast Coast Hustler. It is a finesse, a hybrid finesse slash hair jig. Finesse skirt. It's got like a kind of unique head style. That's really good for kind of standing up, but also slips through both heavy cover and over hard structure extremely well. Yes, it does. Uh, and then it's got the hair which kind of helps with that last um, little bit of finesse presentation while still providing bulk to it it's a hybrid. and makes it killer in cold water especially but we've literally caught fish from ice out to ice in on this jig it is phenomenal they love it the that, big smallies love this and the big largemouth love this too so the, i haven't really caught any big largemouth on this i've only caught big smallies on it I caught a couple of big largemouth on it now, and I dropped an absolute giant at the Vermont Brown, yeah, the uh, Brownie Factory in Vermont this this year, right before I started my job. Mm -hmm. I got smoked off that spot, and I could not move it. I fought it for like five seconds; it just came unbuttoned. Mm. It killed my soul. It really did. <laughs> hey, John, glad you could join us, buddy. Greatly appreciate it, and thank you very much, Doug. And you're very welcome. The thing is about this. You put the little swim bait on there. When you drag it, I don't know if I can do it. 
but you get the swim action out of it, out of the tail. Bingo. And they, it's just an added, an added action to it, and they absolutely love it. You lift it, like even when you're hopping it, you get the tail action. It's Both not, up and down the way up. Just the, just the claws. Plus, it's more natural at that point too, because it's got like the overall size of like, not necessarily micro perch, but like small perch or shiners, um, small, um, you know, sunfish, bluegill, whatever you want to call them, you know, common sunfish. It, it's it really is like an all round universal perfect finesse thing, but for some reason it gets chewed by giants too. Like there's something special about this combo, not just this jig, but also the small swim bait on it that is killer. Now I know plenty of guys that have been killing it with this with a craw trailer. I've caught maybe two fish on it with a craw trailer. I've also barely fished a craw trailer, but yeah, I, I, I got no confidence doing I've that. I've never put. I think I put one craw trailer on one of these, and I didn't like it. I had no confidence, and I threw the freaking swim bait on it. Boom! Right away. Yep. This this is one of those tournaments. This is just caught us big fish. It just it's. Probably one of my favorite finesse fish like styles, little technique, bait to use. Yep. It's freaking, it's unstoppable. Hey, Andrew. Thanks for joining the stream, buddy. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> There's a variety of different weights on this. And for like, I don't know, for me, the quarter ounce is perfect. That's their middle range of the size. I, well, actually, that's not even true anymore because they have more sizes coming out. Um, prior to really committing to the quarter ounce, I was fishing a lot of three eighths ounce. Again, I tried a variety of craw trailers. I was trying, I'll just leave it at that variety. I wasn't just using it straight out of the package. I was trimming trailers like you wouldn't imagine. I was trying all sorts of different sizes where teeny tiny little body, these big legs or fat body with these little short stubby legs, like everything. There's something different about the swim bait on it more than anything that just seems to work. And I think the biggest reason is exactly what Andrew demonstrated. When you're crawling it on the bottom, you're not really crawling it. But even that subtle movement, you get a little shimmy of the tail. It literally, it looks so perfectly natural working on the bottom. We're probably going to regret sharing all this info. That's fine. <laughs> we don't tournament fish anyway. What do we care? So, <laughs> now the plus side too is Derek, the owner of Beast Coast, changed the design on this. So it used to be just a single like wire hook keeper, kind of like what they have on the Ned Rig, you know, or like any other jig, but more specifically how it's a Ned Rig, you know, it's got that little wire. Now he's got a screw lock on it. A little bit more difficult to get a swim bait on there perfectly. Um, I've actually just been too impatient and I just go short amount of the swim bait and just stuff it over it. Holds up pretty well still. I know it's not the right way to do it, but it works. Um, take a look at it right now. I would say a 3.3 inch swim bait of any kind, three to three and a half is like perfect for this. Do not be afraid to go way smaller or quite a bit bigger. Yeah. Rely on that skirt and the hair. There's something about that combo, man. Like he, he just nailed it. And that head style is amazing. Like how often we get stuck on that? Not often. No, it's got a really light duty brush guard, but that is a stout hook. That's actually one of the things we didn't even talk about. This is finesse, but that's like a jig hook. Like that thing has got... Man, that's a pretty good thick gauge. Like that's more than you would get out of your standard like Gamakatsu extra wide gap hook. Like that is a thicker gauge than that. It's pretty much just like a quarter round. Like it's just a finesse jig, really. Yep. It's that's pretty much what it is. But you can swim it like a champ. Mm -hmm. And that's the other thing. It's not man. That's enough. I, I can go on and on and on about how good and how versatile this jig is, but that's the biggest thing. It is versatile. It's got to be one of the single most versatile baits on the market. I'm not just saying that because I'm sponsored by Beast Coast. I legitimately believe that. I have a case dedicated just to Hustlers. I have every color the guy makes and I have them, I don't know, I probably got like six or seven, maybe more of them in both three eighths ounce and quarter ounce now. Like, they're that good. And if you find a bunch of different swim baits that you have absolute confidence in to pair with it, I promise you that thing is worth its weight in gold. It's phenomenal. Um, we got fishing mode. I love the swim baits, the Kitex and stuff. Use them for everything. They're phenomenal. John, mm -hmm. South Shore Mass surface water temp was 80 degrees today. Jeez. I believe it. You guys are always way ahead of everybody else. Um, you now a big part of that too is just how small those bodies of water are. Yeah. Uh, Steve, never had great results with the jig. Probably just me. Lack of technique. Slow down. And don't overthink it. Yeah. You see a rock throw. Pop, it pop. But it's it. <laughs> pop, pop. And I'm not, I'm not pop popping. Literally that, just with your wrist. Show them. 
This is all we're doing. This, that, that last hop. That's about what I do. It comes up about two inches off the bottom. And that's it. And then sometimes I'll do this too. This is actually one of my favorite ways to fish a jig. If I can do this without popping the mic. Pardon me one second. Yeah, that. Just a little shimmy. Like you I'm can get it up onto a rock. Oh, that's perfect. That's literally what I try and do. I, may, I, may, <laughs> I make it just look like it's, like he just said, shimmying across the bottom. Yep. Like it looks like a, like a crayfish just sitting there, like munching on something or like it's trying to like dig down in the dirt or something, trying to get away, trying to hide or something. And sometimes you can like pop it. Like when, if I get close to a rock and it's stuck, I'll just try and pop it up and over like that. But that's it, man. That That is literally what I do. No joke. 90 plus percent of the time I fish a jig. Shimmy it. Little hop. Hop, hop. Pause. Shimmy, shimmy. Hop. That's it. I could not make that visual presentation any more simplified than that. Um, Talon, you're 100% correct. What, Talon, throw the jig Breathe. where you think it could get stuck. Like, lay down. Throw a jig. Tree trunk. Oh, Throw a jig. Tree. Thunk it with a jig. Make it work. Back slowly. Th Talon. Typing. Jeez. <laughs> but you're right. <laughs> um, Grat. I got into micro chatterbaits last year. Opened my eyes to a summer reaction strike. Yeah. Micro chatterbaits, I've heard a lot of people are killer good. Yeah. Um, I hear a lot of people use those for crappies. Yes. Um, on most jig bites, what do you feel? <laughs> Go ahead. No jig bites? <laughs> Either nothing? So, I don't know. <laughs> it's kind I mean, of a loaded a, question. There's a, lot of, there, there's a lot of different things you're looking for for a jig bite. Some, The most common is just you lift up and you feel a thump. You just feel it just dunk. Or you see you have a slack line, you see your line jump, or you see your line moving. You see you lift up and you feel weight. And that, at that point, if I feel weight, I usually just hold it there until I either feel it move or I feel a slight thump. Sometimes you feel just a little tip, 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 like it feels like a bait fish is nipping at it. And what do Sometimes I tell you that's anyway? Your biggest fish. What do I tell you anyway? When sets you think of, hook, hook sets are free and you know what I tell you until you break off, until you break off, <laughs> <laughs> it's worth the risk, man. You just eat it. I mean, it's one of those, like you can usually tell when you're fishing a jig or really any bottom contact bait Yeah. more often than not, when it's hard structured, like you're in a rock because you go to lift and it, it doesn't just feel weight. Like there's nothing coming to it. It is literally 100% of movement that you're doing is transferring to rod versus something that's moving, whether it be vegetation or stick or fish, you're not 100% of your movement isn't translating to the rod. If that makes sense, right, there's give. Spongy. Yeah. Spongy. So for me, it's a little bit harder. It, it like, Again, more often than not, I know it's raw because I go to lift and it, it, there's zero give, none. I'm like, okay, that's, uh, I'll ease up and do it. But if I feel anything even remotely smushy, 99 times out of 100, I'll set the hook. Yeah. Every, I still, every once in a while, I'll be like, oh, why the hell didn't I set the hook on that? Yeah, I and I regret it. <laughs> I, I always do it. Because you still don't want to get stuck in rock. Especially, and when that happens, it's usually when I've already got stuck like a dozen times or more. And then I'm like, okay, I'll play it safe. And then I miss a fish because I'm playing it over safe. Just yeah, eat you know it, what dude. he does? He puts his rod down next to him and wolf back me. Like, <laughs> yeah, that was perfect. <laughs> yeah, every time, man. So <laughs> every time, a lot of those bites. I mean, you're literally gonna feel. That's why I love fishing jig, dude. You're gonna feel just a. You're gonna get thumped. Yeah. And you'll see your line jump. Other times, it's just gonna be heavy weight. You're gonna go load up into it, and it's literally that your rod is loading up, but spongy. Just reel down and eat it. Um, uh, I've noticed there's, though, there's the times you see the lines. Get, they're like nipping at it. Mm -hmm. But I think I think I was thinking about it the other night. I was like, dude, I felt the fish hitting, touching, like nipping at it or something. But I think it is is when it gets it in its mouth, it's it's crushing it with the crushers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just like cut, 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 cut with the crushers. Yep. Because they bass in the back of their throat. If you ever look down there, it has these two. It almost looks like the teeth on their lips. Their teeth yep. in their mouth, but it's like two little pads. What they do is they crush, or they grip, and then that, that helps them swallow. And I think that's what that's doing is they're they're coming down on it. They're just pecking at it with those, like trying to crush it. Yep, and I wholeheartedly agree with that. 
just makes sense to me. I don't know. Yeah, could Grat- be completely wrong, but I don't know. I think you're right. <laughs> Grat makes a really good point too. Um, for a jig bite, you feel your shorts start to tighten up. <laughs> yes, <laughs> every time. Yeah. Then like, there's plenty of times you go to lift up, and you'll just see your line racing. Like, dude, if your line is moving in any way, shape, or form, don't think. Just set the damn hook. Yeah. Um. Last but not least, one of the most important things I try and tell people when they're fishing bottom contact baits like that. Tension on your line. Not like lay your line down. Like watch your weight fall one day, right? If you haven't really done this. And the moment you see your line stop falling, drop your rod tip a little bit so all your slack falls on top. And then just lift enough so you put this nice, beautiful arcing bow in your line. That is tension without impacting any action on your bait whatsoever. Mm-hmm. That is what I try and do as often as I can. I cannot begin to tell you how many fish I lost because I didn't have that remote little bit of tension on my line. And I just didn't feel it. And I go look back and my line's like 15, 20 feet away from where it started and it's already too late. I've lost the fish. Or I gut hook it, which also sucks. Yeah. So just that that moderate amount of tension goes a long, long way towards not missing a lot of stuff. Um, Talon. So for jig bites, you get one of those two things. The fish either crushes it or just picks it up and swims away with it. Right. Which, again, is why I think that that just semi-tension, again, you're just picking up enough, so you're putting a big swooping arc in your line, so it's any movement is going to transfer to your line. Either you're going to see your line literally jump or start to swim, or you're going to feel it. So there's the benefit of that. Steve joined us, Team Beefmaster. What's up, buddy? Hello. I get so many jig bites on that first drop. Reaction bite. Yes. Mm -hmm. And as it gets really hot and those bass move out a little bit deeper or they move into thicker structure... Dude, snap it out of cover. Like, literally yo-yo that shit. Yeah. I mean, I will grab the rod at the reel and then the butt end of it and go, like, snap it like I'm trying to free it from the weeds, which in a lot of cases I am. Yeah, I do that a lot too. And I want that thing to rock it up like five or six feet and then come back down. And that's when I go three-quarter rounds or even quarter rounds jigs if I have them because I want them to come back down kind of slow and I'll change up my jig trailers to something with... Something is better suited specifically for the fall. So it's got like a little bit more eye catchability to it. Yeah. Those are always huge. Um, but that's, we, we there's a, an episode that I want to do with a specific guest on like advanced jig fishing at some point. So we'll save the rest of that for another day. Um, John, you were right, Sean. My chatterbait bite totally died. I caught three in the spinnerbait today. That Dude, it's one or the other. And it should be like that the rest of the year. One or the other will always work. All right, last but not least, for at least what I have available for demonstrations, is actually one of the first baits that was talked about. Uh-huh. Okashira. It is a screw head, well, a screw jig head, screw, spin, spin, oh, what the hell is I that called? What called? Whatever. It's got a little propeller on the front. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's essentially a soft body spy bait. It's the Mega, uh, the Mega Bass Okashira spin head jig or something like that. It literally has just a little prop on the front, and that's a 1 16th ounce head. But what makes it special, and I hope you can kind of see it from back there. I'm waiting for the stream that I'm watching behind me. Mm, let me come down a little bit. Um, those blades are not even. I'm going to move my hand to the side. Hang on. I get, there's like a 10 second delay between the stream preview I can see and what I'm actually doing. One blade is, I would say, almost like two thirds bigger than the other half of the blade. And it's a little cupped. Um, a little bit more cupped than the other one. Whereas the other one is just kind of biased a little bit. When this thing falls, the propeller on itself spins to slow it down, for one. But two, it spirals as it goes down. It's a 1 16th ounce head on this. There's, I think there's a lighter one, and there's definitely heavier ones. But this thing works killer just for straight up swimming it, too. This is a finesse bait that you can cover bottom, that you you just cover a lot of water with. You can cover on the bottom. You can cover it swimming midway through the water calm when they're, like, out in the middle of the lake. Deep water summer pattern suspended over 60 feet but only down like 15 or 20 feet, you can let that, you can count this down to them and just swim it. Oh, I can almost get the prop to spin. Yeah, you can. Yep. I don't know if you guys can see it, but it's definitely spinning. But, I mean, you get the wobble from the tail anyway. It'll probably be easier to do it this way. But then with that offset lopsided blade on it, it adds a little bit more roll to the bait on a steady, retrie- uh, steady retrieve. One of the other things I like about this too, you can fish out like a jig. And we've had, well, at least I've had really good success with that a couple of times now. I've never really used it. No, actually, I don't think I've ever used it. So there was an instance last year where I had John, um, the owner of Wicked Custom Rods, out with me on the New Hampshire Brownie Factory. And it was weird. Like, they were definitely post-spawn, but they weren't... 
They were aggressive enough to want to chase a jerk bait, but we could not lock in a cadence that would get them to commit to it. But we couldn't get them on bottom contact baits either. Like the Ned Rig bite that we'd had the last two weeks just completely died. So I was like, all right, well, I've got the Okashira. And there was one day before that, we were out in that stupid lake with all the super skinny bass. Remember I finally, like, we were wicked slow, brutally cold. Um, you went there for trout in the middle of winter. Okay, yeah. Um, and I picked up this thing. I think it was like the third or fourth cast. I finally caught one. Mm -hmm. And I was just slow rolling the thing on my spinning setup. Bonded out, counted it down by I thought it was about 15 feet deep and just slow rolled it back to the boat and I got smoked. So knowing that they were kind of chasing things but not really committed to biting something bigger, I had the idea for that. Okay, I'll throw that out. We are in super shallow water still, five feet or less. Straight retrieve and see how it goes. Nothing really happening, but we saw chasers. So John decided to pick it up because I actually did get one. And he's like, well, what are you doing? And I was like, well, this is what I'm doing, but I have an idea for you because I think it's going to work better and I want you to do it first because if it works, then you're going to do better. Work it like a jig. Bomb it out, swim it a little bit, kill it. And then almost work it either like a jig or a Texas rig. So I had him doing that. I had him lifting it almost like Texas rig. So it was coming up and then just doing that awkward like spiral on the, on the bottom. But then it would come down like on the head mm -hmm. and then the tail would lie down. And then he'd pull it back and it would swim up and it was come down nice and like so it really does look like a beautiful imitation of like a dying bait fish and he started catching fish like left right and center so this is another like it, it looks weird and it looks really simple but i promise you it's another very versatile bait you can fish on the bottom you can burn it back you can fish in the middle of the water column you can do everything with that bait even i mean it's almost like a glorified ned rig slash tube in that regard too it falls relatively straight and has a relatively straight profile, like a Ned Rig, but <clears throat> like a tube, it spirals on the fall. So you kind of get the best of, both, best of both worlds with that. Highly recommend. Um, Greg, I got in late. Have you already talked Ned Rigs? Yes, Grat, we did earlier in the stream. Sorry, buddy. David, 4.7 largemouth today, snapping a swim jig out of pond weed. That's what I like to hear. Oh. <laughs> yeah, we're, I, where are we go? We got to go for largemouth this weekend. I know. I want to go for largies. I'm well, we know we can catch them pretty good at Windy now. Yeah. I have some other places I want to try. Okay. So, it's not going to be just the same damn spots we go to all the time. Okay. Probably the same boat launch, but different spots. Um, John, that screwhead is nuts. When they start feeding on small bait fish, that thing put in work for me last summer, working super slow. Yes. Absolutely agree there. Ferris, I've been killing it with a shaky head and a weightless fluke. I tried the fluke a couple times. Last few times we went out. And I almost brought that up for a finesse presentation, but I thought that was kind of toeing the line. It's hard to say. Grat, what's your setup on the Okashira? Oh my god, I just realized that out of all of those other things, we didn't talk about setups for like almost all these baits. What are you looking for? Oh, I wasn't actually pointing over there. I was just like... I know, but I didn't even see you point that. I just saw the... Oh, yeah, yeah. That's actually one of, my, um, one of our subscribers. He painted that. No, I'm talking about... <gasps> okay, we have another bait we have to talk about. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, if you can get them without wrecking everything. <laughs> Set up for Okashira. So, I actually had a custom-built rod from Wicked Custom Rods, specifically for not just Okashiras, but ultra finesse stuff in general. And I broke that rod. <laughs> I only broke the tip off, the top three inches. But for that rod, like, that was it. That was the difference maker for making like 1 16th ounce weights and lower work exceptionally well oh crap i put them somewhere else that's we can still talk about it um they're in the boat i think i don't know where they are so what i had versus what i'm getting like i think in next week because i'm having another one built by john at wicked custom rods my first rod was a seven foot three medium light fast and i threw that with a 3000 series reel 10 pound braid to a very long eight pound liter of fluorocarbon. That was good enough to throw it like a hundred to 120 feet on a good day, which is still pretty far, but not like crazy far. No, but for something that small. For 116 ounce weight. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's pretty freaking good. Yep. <laughs> um, that thing was actually even killer for like one tenth ounce. I could bomb that. Now, if I had a fully spooled like to the brim 4,000 series reel, I could probably get like 120 plus on every cast. Um, 
but like 100 to 100 and actually 20 i think i said 150 earlier like 100 120 130 something like that like that was pretty consistent and feet not yards i'm so sick of people saying yards and they're talking about casting distance if you're throwing it 150 yards <laughs> you're throwing it one and a half football fields what do you think you are charlie moore <laughs> <laughs> so long ass cast dude he does <laughs> it's nuts um so now the rod that i'm having built sorry i punched him like seven foot six medium light fast and that's literally that one is actually specifically rated to one sixteenth ounce that i do have a four thousand series reel that is spooled up to the max with 10 pound j braid for my braid that i'll throw to eight pound fluorocarbon leader and it seems kind of light for a hook of that size but i promise you that hook in that okashira is deadly sharp it is like it's crazy it's a stout hook but it's it's like a drop shot hook for like how sticky it is so don't be afraid that a light hook set won't still get a good hook set with that um gary's fishing mission i just got in first time making the live but listen to my way to work all the time nice thanks gary greatly awesome. appreciate it but yeah we'll be on for a little bit don't worry go to texas rig tube has been my go-to the last week i've never texas rigged a tube i lied i tried that a couple times and i had caught zero fish bobby stark yeah he used to take me out yep out the, the pond. Yeah, yeah yeah the one out in the woods yeah Lime bro yeah he had me out there and we texas rig twos could not stop catching fish i know guys that do it a lot and they kill it i tried it dude i tried like hell and i could not get bit on it i've been trying in a few years though i don't know how i still have them like if i go in my black and blue flipping case for all my soft plastics i have all my tubes i bought specifically for doing that <laughs> they're in there fish mode you got to get on that yep dude um john mango uses a seven foot medium light for that screw head yeah that's fine it depends on what weight you're doing like 1 16th ounce i want a little bit longer rod like i feel for me it, i feel it really helps same same vein as drop shot rod you know my drop shot rod was seven two my next one's gonna be seven three uh what else we got here Guggen Slayer caught a giant pike on my medium light combo last Sunday. Seven pound gamma touch is impressive. Nice. Yeah, fishing mode. You should be Texas rigging, Texas rigging more often, dude. It is killer. Is Andrew's mic completely off? I no. Hope not. <laughs> right into it. Yeah, David, that would be a really good hair jig rod, honestly. Like, I'm going to call it like my ultra finesse setup because it will be intended for things like basically one eighth ounce or lighter. So hair jigs would be a prime example for that. Um, obviously, Okashira, Ned rig. I'll be able to bomb it a million miles. If I want a second drop shot rig for the day, depending on what weight I'm throwing, it might be like not quite up to snuff, but it's a long rod. As long as I'm not like trying to bomb a half ounce weight, say, even though the rod is rated to that, it'll be fine. So I, that's what I'm really liking about that. It'll be like a really nice dual ultra finesse setup. Um, let's back up for a minute because one of the things we didn't talk about that I really wanted to cover was gear set up for all these things. What do you prefer for the Beast Coast Hustler? Because that was the thing that you got to talk about the most. And plus, I need another drink. So I'm going to turn it over to you for a second. And I want, again, gear setup. Like, what do you like for your rod, your line, and everything? Your preferred setup versus, like, oh, what would be a good secondary setup? Secondary setup? So <clears throat> when I'm fishing, like, somewhat heavy cover for this, I will throw it on my on my regular jig rod with 15 pound floral um with uh eight three to one uh loose i don't even know what real it is lose something it's the uh oh it's right there lose custom pro speed spool slp it's this reel right here oh it's not even in the box but this is a reel and uh the eight three to one this it i mean it's nice to like be able to pitch this in somewhere and get it out really fast uh but 15 15 pound does pretty well for me i mean i would go down to 12 if i had to um secondary i would i would have 12 pound if i if i decided just to throw this all day um i'd probably have yeah I'd say 12 pound probably if I if I decided to throw this all day and I wasn't bouncing in between jigs and this instead of 15 pound I'd probably throw a 12 pound on yep. a medium heavy I would still throw it on a medium heavy actually no even a medium is fine a with that a medium would probably be fine on it too 
like a like a seven to seven two. I'm guessing. Yep. Would probably be pretty good. So I know that day at the smallmouth place mm -hmm. where you caught those two four plus pound smallies. Mm -hmm. I gave you my other go to spinning rod, which was a seven foot medium heavy. No, sorry, uh, seven foot medium fast. Yeah, I and I that think that one's only rated to three eighths ounce. And I believe you were throwing a three eighths ounce hustler on it. Yeah, it was. And it, it's good. That that rod is more. It's kind of towing the line of like just under medium for like if you were to pick up a you know half dozen different brands. The Lose Team Lose Custom Pro Speed Spin. So it's their their kind of flagship rod. Maybe it's one step down from that. It's like two hundred twenty bucks. It's like I said, it's just below what I would consider like your average medium. But I really like that, especially for their medium heavy. You just get a little bit more suppleness to it. So that you would have been throwing 10 pound braid to 10 pound leader when you're using that setup. Wow, that felt really good. That's my go to <laughs> 10 to 10 on that. Uh, unless I'm really fishing around like a ton of heavy rocks, then I'll throw a 12 pound leader. Again, I know it doesn't make any sense to go lighter mainline to heavier leader but if you're fishing around a ton of rocks just having that little bit of added security with that abrasion resistance from a slightly heavier fluorocarbon it just works it makes me feel good i've honestly have never had an issue using bigger line like heavier line yep and i don't think it really deters the fish that much unless it's like uber crystal super clear water right and that's like, the thing like i've got all the comments in the world for my 10 pound abrasics that if I can get away with lighter line, then I do. But do you need to? Absolutely not. If you got shit, even just straight 15 pound, you'd be fine. I use 15 pound for all my jerk baits, so. <laughs> and he kills it. <laughs> like, all the time. <laughs> so. I just like, I like having the insurance of being able to work this in the rocks and not have to worry about it. Um. Really? Hang on, Ferris. We'll come back to you in a second. Um. I want to elaborate on me for the hustler. If I'm throwing the quarter ounce, then I want the rod that I just said that he used that day. That seven foot medium, uh, medium fast from Luz. Um, 10 pound braid or 15 pound braid. Cause I originally started 15 pound, realized I get a 10. So I downsized next time I need braid. And then anywhere from a 10 to 12 pound and I'll tie a long leader. I'll tie it like 20 plus feet long. If I'm fishing a ton of rocks, especially deep over big rocks. Then I'll go 20, 25 feet. I do not want my leader knot anywhere near those rocks. So, and then plus if you're fishing on rocks, you're going to have to retie pretty often. So I try and keep that in consideration when I tie my leader length. Uh, but if I'm fishing my three eighths ounce, then I have another lose team lose custom pro speed stick. That's a seven foot medium heavy fast. But again, that's kind of like on the lower end, like all those rods, whatever they're rated, they're like 10% below what an average rod would be at that power rating. But I like it. I get a 3 8 ounce jig, especially the Hustler, with like a 3.3 inch swim bait on the back. The uh, Kitek Swing Impact Fat on that 7 foot medium heavy is just stupid perfect. Dude, you've seen me. Even with the quarter ounce, like how far do I cast the quarter ounce far. on that setup? Those are easy 150 foot casts. It is. And, and oh, yeah. it's only on a 2000 series reel too. So it's not like I got this huge honking face that line strips off of easily. It's just an absolutely perfect setup for that. So... That's it's a pretty streamlined bait. Like it's gonna go. Yeah, it's that, not a football jig where it's gonna catch a lot of wind. Right. That thing's gonna, and it's gonna go big time. Love it. Um, Ferris, I threw the Beast Coast Hustler for about two hours ago. Uh, two hours a few days ago. I have yet to catch my first fish ever on a jig. What were you using for a trailer, and what color were you using for what water clarity? There's a lot of questions to ask to answer that question. Um. Oh, maybe you just answered that to David. Thanks for the recommendation. I think I had the SK Rage Swimmer and the SK Rage Tail. I will have to check out the grub. Hmm. Let's see. John, it does make sense. You can cast that 10 pound braid so far. You can bomb it. Okay, everybody's talking to Ferris about the jig. So it was a craw trailer, black and blue jig, and trailer water's pretty clear. That right there. Green pumpkin. Yep. Colder water, black and blue. Doesn't matter water clarity. Like when you're talking 45 degrees or less, black and blue. 99 times out of 100, black and blue. Red. Actually, I would say like 90 times out of 100, black and blue. The other nine times out of 10, red. One time out of that 100, green pumpkin. Yeah. But now, absolutely green pumpkin. 100% all the way through. Maybe you can mix and match a little bit, but green pumpkin 
um, when the water, like when you're talking spawn period and beyond, I save black and blue for only the dirtiest stained like chocolate milk water I can find. Otherwise, I go as naturally as I can, especially in gin clear water. I will go green pumpkin or um, green pumpkin with brown, but closer, more closer to a brown than a green pumpkin. Yep, that's what I would I would do. Or even a brown jig with a green pumpkin trailer. Yeah, mix and match like yep. that, but keep it more natural. And swim bait trailer too. Don't overlook that. I, nothing against the craw trailer. I just haven't had really any luck myself doing it. So I can't recommend it. Hustler. Yeah. I know plenty of guys that do it. I just, for us, swim bait has been too damn good. Yeah. We've tried the craw. How many, <laughs> how many like different craw trailers have I tried on that? All of them. <laughs> 30, maybe. <laughs> I bought four different jig trailers over the winter, specifically for the Hustler. I tried all four different colors. Hate them. No confidence. On top of probably the other five or six I tried last year. Um, for everything that makes sense on it, I have a few more that I haven't tried that I think could work. It's a bit bulkier. Might not be bad. Good so. luck, TV. Good luck out there tonight. Yeah, good luck, buddy. Can I come? Right? <laughs> um, what was one of the other things? Oh, so one of the other techniques that we didn't get to talk about that he tried to find the bait for? Demiki rig. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. One of the reasons why I didn't think to bring it up is because, like, I know it works killer for some guys. I can't make the damn thing to work to save life for me. I think I've caught, like, two or three fish doing it at the last three years. That's, it's basically, it looks like a round head jig head, but the light, so the head and the hook comes up and around like this. We're, hang on. Take oh, this off. Man. It almost looks like a shaky head, right? Except the line tie is right here, straight up and down. So when you're vertical jigging it, it literally sits just like that. But it's got a big old head on there for the hook. The eyelet is turned 90, so it's in line with the hook, oh, yeah, I think, yeah, yeah, yeah. if memory serves correct. So. And then you hang a little swim bait off the back. But that big head on it, on most of them, also has vibrant, like, giant eyes on the jig head, too. So it's supposed to look like a little bait fish just chilling down there. Almost like a drop shot, but instead of the weight being below the bait and you're imparting a lot of action into it, the weight is on the bait. And most of the time, you're just dead sick in the damn thing. They want it up off the bottom. They still want that lifelike look and you want to be able to get it down to them, but don't move the damn thing. That's what I've been told. I, again, I think I've caught like two or three fish doing it. So it's it's something worth looking into if you're interested. Just trying to look, like expand on what it is you're doing for finesse. But I've got nothing I can add to it. <laughs> I can tell you confidently, like, yeah, do this or do that. And try this, try that. I, I haven't figured it out yet. Um, another thing that we didn't bring up that's an audible mention, underspins. Yeah. You say that. We're going to make it work this year. I know. I've never caught a fish on underspin. That's going to change. Actually, you know what? In the next couple weeks, we can get together with Dale down on the Quabbin in his boat. Okay. And he's got active target. So that was one of the things we talked about on a stream one night was he said, he asked me, we were talking about the fact, what's what's the one thing you want to learn the most? Like this is midsummer smallies when they're suspended out over deep water. That's still the thing I struggle with the most. I'm just, I struggle to find them. I have some finesse techniques that I want to work. Underspin is a big one. It's a jig head with a little underspin, like basically blade from a spinnerbait. And then one like pretty stout jig hook. That you put a little swim bait on. You can put a couple of different baits on it, but generally speaking, a three and a half to four inch swim bait. And you just swim the damn thing. But you throw in like a three eighths or a half ounce head and count it down to the depth that the fish are at. Or you can fish the thing vertically too, depending on what the fish are doing. That's another really good finesse technique that I've caught some fish on it, but isn't something that I would really be able to recommend because it's not something that I 100% I'm like, yep, yeah, I've killed it on it and I know what I'm talking about. So honorable mention. Um, but yeah, anyway, that's Dale said when we're ready, give him a bus. We'll go down and fish the quad with him out of his boat. It's going to be hot and sunny that day. Probably. So I should wear my FXR UV shirt. Hey, we got sponsored. <laughs> <laughs> no joke though. We added another sponsor. We, had, we signed the contract officially this morning. Yep. Got word back. We are officially sponsored by FXR fish. Pro fish. Wow. Brain. It's been a long day. It's been a long <laughs> week. Been working late every day. <laughs> yeah, seriously. It's been good. <clears throat> and those UV shirts are no joke. That was a no-brainer. And the guy reached out to me. I'm like, oh, yeah. He sent me the text. I was like, mm. 
<laughs> it's like that TikTok video with the credit card, but it's your pen. Yeah. <laughs> Daniel, Where do I you sign? Up for some weed lines, you should talk to Brian. <laughs> ben, barely bounce from the bottom, whether it be sand. Yeah, no, Dan, you're absolutely right. That's a really good way to get him. Um, what was the other thing I wanted to talk about? We talked about gear, shaky head. We talked about gear for shaky head and Okashira and Hustler. Ned Rig, I'd throw it on either my Okashira setup or my drop shot setup. Oh, one more thing about drop shot too. The colder the what colder the water, the shorter your tag length. So the shorter distance between your bait and your weight. Yeah. The hotter you want it longer. You can run it up to even two feet. Which we've done. Yep. And usually ten to twelve inches is, is pretty much like the money. It and works over that. If I mean, depending on how much like grass is down there and how long the grass is, the longer you want it to be. One of the things too about drop shot for tags, a lot of what dictates that is how they're feeding for the day, mm -hmm. not just cover too. Okay. Um, so to expand upon what you just said, sometimes I, I've said it so many times, in so many videos, and pretty much every stream where small has come up. One of the things I always try to establish first, although we've gotten much better at it now the last few years from all the time in the water, given certain times of the year and conditions, we already know ahead of time. Like they're most likely feeding up or they're most likely feeding down. They're feeding down, shorten that tag way up, man. I mean, you could get away with like four or six inches. If they're feeding up, you can still kind of get them off the bottom, but now you want to go like 12 to 16, 18 inches. My buddy Travis, who is um, a guide, licensed guide up in northern New Hampshire, him and his dad, like they tie it like two to three feet and they fish only like a 316 ounce weight. So they're really keying in on fish that are getting it on the fall or they're kind of bouncing it along. Like they, they do it just a little bit differently than what I do, but we, we both like have really good success doing it either way. So... Mm -hmm. What I say isn't what we say isn't gospel by any means. Ferris, yay! Thank you. Thanks, <laughs> we appreciate you. We appreciate you greatly. That's what I appreciate about Ferris. That's what I appreciate. Um, yeah, David, I did see that. That's actually like down there, like Tennessee River area, um, Kentucky Lake. Like, I think Kentucky Lake is really where the Demiki rig was like. Maybe not invented, but like kind of really where that that technique cut its teeth, where it really came from, was down there doing it, you know, on that lake, that area. Did you hear about Boone Lake? No. It's in, I think it's in Tennessee or Pennsylvania or some, one of those, Kentucky or somewhere down there. Yep. They're putting in fifty thousand bass, largemouth, to try and help out the lake's ecosystem, or whatever. Really? But they're doing like. A northeastern strand, strain, and um, like a Florida strain hybrid. Really? So those bass are going to get giant. Could you imagine the ferocity of a northeastern strain bass with the growth rate of a southern impoundment? It'd be like a bass mixed with a pike. Dude, they, those guys don't know what they're about to get into. No, they're about to unleash a freaking. It's it's gonna be bad. That that lake's going to shit. <laughs> That's gonna be awesome. That'd it's be great. Be sweet. Yeah. Good for them. There's not gonna be any other fish besides bait fish in there. Any yeah. Bass. Seriously. Um. All right. It's 9:45. We st I still have a few more things I can bring up, but like now is the time. Really, if you got any more questions, guys, whether it be specifically about finesse fishing or just like anything in general, uh, one of the things I want to try and get away from moving forward. Although this was just too good of a topic to pass up, given the success we just had this past weekend, it's very applicable to what's going on now. Finesse fishing. More often than not, bigger moving baits or just like bigger traditional stuff is going to kill it. If it's not, finesse is huge right now. We proved that this weekend. I, I'm i not trying to rub salt in the moon, but I think you caught five fish. I caught five, what? but I was also throwing something a lot bigger. He was sticking with the finesse and he was killing yeah, we were I out there for. Switched, I was trying to get the bigger bite, and it just wasn't with me. Yeah, I think six we were out there for hours? seven hours, six, seven and I caught hours? twenty or twenty-five. I forgot. Yeah. And twenty plus of those came on just a shaky head. I think I only caught a couple. I caught one in the jig, two in the T rig, one in the chatterbait. That was it. Just those four. Maybe two in the jig. 
But I really think it's one. It goes to show you though, if it's not where if something isn't working, switch. Right. But hats off to you for trying to make it work. Eh. But so I, like that's to kind of wrap up that whole muddling of thoughts. I'm trying to get away from like very specific topics for the streams. Like I know it's good and everything, but I want to keep it more open. So people can just come in here and be like, you know what? I've been thinking about something. I want to run it by you. Um, not just us. Maybe people in the chat can also help out too. Like I want to continue to grow this community and make this, you know, just more of a, an open thing. Right. Like there's been a lot of people I've been seeing a lot of people asking questions and other people have been answering it. Well, because I mean, we have our topic that we need to cover and answering other people's questions right and thank you for jumping in and answering questions yep um sir altitude late to joining tonight don't worry about it buddy i also blame your wife any thoughts on the tokyo <laughs> rig <laughs> um I, I got nothing to add to it other than i know it works great i just i've thrown it maybe twice i have a bunch actually it's funny when i re completely reorganized my boat before i went out this past weekend i found them <laughs> they were in a random box up there on the wall <laughs> i've thrown tokyo rig a few times i like it it's like a super power shot. Yeah. <laughs> and you can fish that stuff in some gnarly, gnarly cover. It's and it, sli it slips through really well. That's the one thing I did notice about it from like the two times I threw it. Like you can throw that into some pretty gnarly stuff and it slides through like really nice. But then it simplifies your life too. Cause you just tie one knot right to the whole damn rig and you're good to go. Um, oh, John asked you about, have you had any success in the eight inch mag draft? <laughs> You had one, right? Three and three quarter. Three and three quarter up in the Vermont Brownie Factory. I caught about a four pound sucker. <clears throat> that was amazing. <laughs> and a probably one of the biggest white perch I've ever seen. I don't know how. On the eight inch. Yeah, that was insane. And I grinded it out pretty hard the other day at that place I went to. And no takers? No. I got I felt nips, but I don't know what it was. Something was messing with it. No takers. Bummer. Not a bass yet. Grat. Thank you very much. Andrew will pick up that penny. What penny? <laughs> I don't know. He just said Andrew can pick up the penny. Can, can you pick oh, you are blind. Oh. You can't read that. Oh, <laughs> I'm, I'm slow. <laughs> It's been a long day for both of us. Grat, seriously, thank you very much for the donation, man. Greatly appreciate it. We're getting very, very close to getting you that PC. And then we can return our attention back to the camera. Yeah, we need a camera too. So if anybody's got a really nice camera they're willing to give up that, that, they, that they don't use. I'm probably going to buy another, another phone pretty soon here. I'm up for an upgrade soon anyway, and that, that will help. But we still do need another, a nice digital camera for the channel in general. That'll go a long way. But PC first so that Andrew can help out with editing because that's going to go much longer, uh, longer way. Yeah. But I'm actually, when we're done the stream, I'm going to go back to editing the video from this past weekend. Because I already got started on it. Um, Pasha, what's your take on frog fishing and is it post spawn around New England right now? Absolutely post spawn in probably 90% of all bodies of water, except for extreme far northern areas of New England. It's probably still in the middle of the spawn or just wrapping up. Probably just wrapping up for like worst case scenario. Um, yeah, dude, frog fishing post spawn or just frog fishing in general in New England? Uh, yep. <laughs> yeah, I'd. I haven't yet, but I definitely want to. Remember when, over the weekend, like we saw them blowing up and we knew they were blowing up on dragonflies, but I was like, you said it like, you know what, man, you should, you should be throwing the frog. And I, I re-rigged my rod and I threw it, but I didn't really commit to it because I wasn't feeling it. I should have one tied on a different frog and two, I should have put that damn thing on the bank. I know a couple of guys that killed it on the frog this weekend. One guy had 27 plus pounds. I forget the exact on his best five fish here in New Hampshire. Wait. Four fives and a 6.8, I think where was his biggest that? of the day. Let me know. Where was it? That was John. John. John Army. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All frog. And like, I've caught a lot of big frog fish myself over the years. And I've caught a lot of frog fish in general over the years. It is absolutely killer. But the thing he told me was he was catching it like mega shallow. And I, I just, I didn't, I didn't throw it up. Well, there was a couple of spots where I did, but... I should have been throwing the damn thing on the bank. And that's not me just speaking about myself. That's elaborating further on what I think about frogs in New England in general. Dude, do not be afraid to literally throw it on the bank, like an inch or two on the bank and then pull it out. Cause those big fish will still surprise you for how shallow they can get. Yeah. They can get into inches of water. Yep. And now's the time, like, especially right now because they're post spawn. In a lot of cases, 
we're well into the post spawn so these fish have recovered and they're starting to eat again i'm going to keep saying it until we're past that point they're not going that far they're going to be anywhere from the bank out to that first transition point from where they would have been pre-spawn coming into the spawn because there's still so much bait fish up shallow especially bluegill that are getting ready to spawn they're not going far all their food is still right there on the bank so keep that in mind you get a cover from the bank out 50 feet i mean literally on the bank we were i was talking about sunday i've had a couple days where even on a jig, I literally was slapping the bank with my jig and getting smoked the moment it fell into the water. Yeah. Okay. There's just some days they hug the shore. We went last year to that place that we went this past weekend, and I was tossing. Actually, you weren't there. It was me and might have been nice. It might have been alone. Where I was throwing the jig as far up into the shadiest area, literally onto the bank. Yep. And as soon as I dragged the frog down into the water. Boom. Exploded almost every single cast. It was insane. That's what I really want to do this weekend. It was right around this time of year. Well, there's gonna be mint for like a lot of things this weekend. I'm mm -hmm. feeling it. It's gonna happen. We're gonna catch a giant on Winnie. We'll go do that. Um mm -hmm. yeah, fishing mode, he's got a good point. You know, like it doesn't matter how you guys want to donate for those that do, like seriously, thank you so much. Um, YouTube does take a huge cut. Like, I think one of the streams recently we said we'd had um like six hundred and eighty dollars donated so far to that point. But what hit my bank account was only $400. After all was said and done, the rest went to YouTube, which sucks. Uh, if you guys do it directly to either my Venmo or PayPal, I get 100% of it. Uh, I don't care. Money's money. And like literally anything helps. Even a dollar. Like guys, it doesn't matter. Uh, and again, it, I don't, not pushing anybody. Just for those that do, cannot tell you how much we appreciate it. Like just having that community support, people that want to see us succeed and throwing their own money into it. To help us make that work like that's huge um pasha yeah caught a five pound on the bank last week there you go Jesus, that'd be sick. fishing mode first frog fish last weekend too nothing big but knocked the dust off it nice man gary's fishing mission yep i'm frogging kingston on saturday i feel it nice dude good luck buddy i wish i'd get out saturday but i am gonna yeah. try and get out of work early tomorrow I'm going out tomorrow night i don't have time no, I, I got too much to do. I got to go out tomorrow. I'm going to get out early. I got to clean the boat I'm from that right. scum line. I'm just going right out there. I might join you. We'll just see. For a couple hours. Just for a couple of hours. I ain't going out late, but I'll go out till at least 11. <laughs> <laughs> I got to clean the boat bad. So tomorrow I'm going to mow, actually. And then I'm going to try and go wash the boat. And then Saturday morning, take the kids to the skate park. And then I'm going to go scrub the boat carpet because I haven't washed it since I bought the thing. And I'm kind of afraid to see what that color water is going to look like. Have you even watched the carpet since you bought the boat? No, I take that back. I've you done it. Did. I've done it twice. I thought you did. Oh, but only twice in two and a half years. But one of them was not really a clean. Like I did one deep clean because I got rained on enough. Doesn't really matter. Right. They, they speared away in two weeks, so that's about a year's worth of washing. Seriously, <laughs> dude, that water was black when it came out. Like when it was down the ground, like all oh. that crap. It was ah, so much crud buried in there. But like I've got two carpet decals. I got a Beast Coast one. And I got one from Lou's I'm going to throw on. Now we're sponsored by um, FXR. I'm going to throw a couple of FXR ones on the boat too. So I could get that carpet looking mint. I got some sweet brushes for Amazon. Let's thanks to... Some carpet details. Probably. I'll just make sure I'll have them throwing more. Um, throw on my boat. Paul from Riverside Shine. Auto detailing down in Mass. He yep. recommended some brushes off Amazon. Do you attach the core with this drill? Mm -hmm. Get that carpet squeaky clean. Got a pressure washer. We're good to go. It's going to look great. Um, John Mango. Best frog. The only one I can say confidently, because I don't fish them often enough, to really have a favorite is the Tekel Sprinker Frog. Been a fan of that since it came out. Works killer. Uh, other than that, dude, I keep it simple. I'll throw whatever I get, the Spro. Or... This is one frog that I had a couple years ago. It literally looks like a clown. It's the white one, and it's got... It yeah, looks yeah, like yeah. A, it looks like a piece of cake. Oh, it's that's... Like, um. I forget the name of it, but I ah, killed it on this. Scum Frog. It was a scum frog. Yep. That's that's my favorite frog, the scum frog. Yep. Not just that one, but scum frog brand. That's like, oh, dude. They're like $3. <laughs> the fish love them. Um, Tom Hens, turning on Saturday on Lake Champlain. Any advice? Only fished there once in my life. I've only technically fished there twice in my life now. <sighs> I don't know what to tell you, man. Um, it depends on what end of the lake you're on. The whole southern half of the lake is definitely post at this point, except for maybe some smallmouth. Andrew's kind of quiet still. Am I? Damn it. 
Sorry, I don't know how to fix that. He, his mic is almost jacked all the way up. Well, actually, no. Well, yeah. Really quick. Turn up your mic two more notches, and then people, let me know after this point of us talking right here if you start getting feedback. Because he was up louder earlier, but we had to turn it down because someone was having static. I think it was him. Nope. Go over. That one. Two clicks. There you go. Okay. Let me know if there's any static. Um, Hello. <laughs> better at the end of the stream. Fishing north out of Chazy Landing. Uh, you're going to have a mix of everything, man. From, from what I know, just from reading and talking to people, it's going to be a mix of spawning and post-spawn smallmouth. You're probably going to get beat by guys with froggers driving around looking for nothing but four plus... Um, wait, he raised mine? No. Do we have that backwards the whole time? We'll find out. Yeah, turn that one up. Is that better? That can't be right. Hmm. Anyway, um, yeah, from from everything I know about fishing Champlain, from what people have told me, are you having problems? Get <laughs> As he breaks it, trying not <laughs> to break it, um, you're probably gonna get beat by guys that already had like a hundred different beds already mapped out with four plus pound smallmouth on them, and they're gonna go out there with a flogger, drop down, pluck them, throw them in the box. I don't know what to tell you. Which I don't know why they're... Uh, that's Your a whole different got issue. Sold out. Oh, God. Sorry. So, yeah. Apparently, those were... That would explain a lot. That doesn't make any sense, though, because my mic input is the one on the left, and yours is the one on the right. I don't know. Maybe it's up and down, left and right. Wait. Am I still really loud? John is real loud. See? I was right. I was right. Which one? So, I'm... No, that's you. So, you need to... That's me. Oh my god, maxed it out. That's probably gonna be like wicked static, you know? Is that good though? Oh god. Now they're saying not anymore. Oh, we're about to run out. I'm not trying to talk loud because I'm afraid. Oh wait, hang on. Oh yeah, dude. Okay, no, you gotta flip them back. Yeah. I can see the mic blowing out in the software. Why is that backwards? Sorry, I'm learning things about this. Now you're really loud. <laughs> <laughs> Those are backwards. That's messed up, dude. Chat, stop yelling. <laughs> Sorry. So, okay. Oh, whatever. Deal with it. <laughs> that I'll have to post a picture so you guys. Can, all right. Hopefully this is better. But let me know. Um, get up close to yours too, so people can let us know. That's. I'm so sorry about that, guys. iPhone users. <laughs> sorry. It literally doesn't make any sense. There's, there's like. Two inputs here, right? This is mine, and this is Andrew's. And then over here, there's a knob and a knob. The closer one, I would assume, like, it'd be like, like, left, right, like, me, Andrew. And then it should be me, Andrew. But it's not. It's Andrew, me, on the knobs. How does now it's fine? Okay. So they're, they're backwards. Why are they backwards? That doesn't make any sense. It's electronics. They probably fucked up. Oh, it could be the software. Maybe it flip-flopped it and reversed it. Because literally, that doesn't make any sense. Rest in peace, headphone users. Because <laughs> essentially, those inputs go... It, like, inputs to controls, it goes 1, 2, 2, 1. When they should be 1, 2, 1, 2. I don't know. China! China. <laughs> China. Yeah. Yeah. It, and it's not cheap stuff, either. That was... Just that audio controller alone was 120 bucks. Oh, I know. It's made in 96. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> if anything, it should be better, then. It should be analog, not digital. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Tubes, buddy. Tubes. Tubes. <gasps> we didn't talk about tubes this whole time. Tubes are good. Use tubes them. are phenomenal. We saved the best for last. That's what we did. How did we not? I, Gary, I can promise you I do not have it backwards. <laughs> I, I, So, two mics input to one device. That device, one output to the PC. But in the PC, I have software that splits the mics. Technically, I, I'm assuming it's in that software. It reversed them. Something's broken. It's okay. Now we know. So thank you guys again. I, I keep asking. If anything's wonky, let us know. We'll fix it. So we get that straightened out. Thank you. Um, Tubes. Favorite tube. I'm a simple guy. Strike King Coffee. Three and a half inch. Double dipped. Easy yep. peasy. What are the other ones? Reaction? Zooms are good. Um, 
Reaction Innovation. Oh, I haven't used those. I The only the ones I, I have... one bag of them, and they were really good. My whole thing is full of just Strike Kings and Zooms. Um, one of the things I do want to get that I've like been seeing a lot of really good feedback on is the Get Bit ones. Um, and that's a smaller company out of the Midwest. Like Lake, like Great Lakes that areas. White package, red writing. I think so. And apparently they're like a finesse thing. Hmm. And then there's another guy, Jeff um, Maggie, who... <sighs> Hard to explain how I know him. I friends him on Facebook, but like Mike Klazen, Klazo, yep, from Ontario there. Klazen, Klazen, whatever. He knows, um, he knows this guy Jeff. He's got his own YouTube channel now. Dude's a hammer on Lake Ontario, and he's fishing like these 2.5 inch tubes on a big old head, and it looks weird, but it looks good. What like I want that. Half? It's this little stubby thing. Big fat head though. I so like I want to get those to change up a little bit. Stop. Sorry. Oh, gets it. <laughs> gets it. Yeah, those. Those are good too, yeah. Put it out. <laughs> Sorry, Mike. I dude, literally every time after a stream I go on Discord and see Mike like, I really wish you would stop telling everybody all the juice. <laughs> nobody fishes up where you live though. So nobody down here fishes up where you live, so it doesn't matter. So backing up, sir, I'll do ask about size, like three and a half inch man. Like I, I keep it pretty simple. Sometimes um, I'll go on either side of that, three and three quarter, three and three and a quarter. But like, I just have really good success on doing that. I almost always, before, would fish either a quarter ounce or like a, a three sixteenth, well, one eighth, three sixteenths and quarter ounce. But the last two years I've gone to a three eighths ounce, like just a ball head jig stuffed in there. That works really good. I don't know why, but just that heavier weight just seems to do really good, even in shallow water. Um... Z fish. I fished big bite tubes forever, but Paul Mueller recommended me to check out the Bass Pro Tender Tube. It is by far the best I fished. Those are also good. Paul well, Mueller's actually a dickhead. Yeah, that too. Uh, <laughs> those Pro Tender Tubes are the ones we got the first time we went to Lake Ontario. Those are the skinny oh, ones. Oh yeah, those ones are good. Those are really good, and they like they look kind of good with the like the bulkier head inside. I don't know what it's like about it that makes them more enticing for fish, but I've I've actually had better success doing it that way. I don't know. Uh, Steve, Team Beefmaster, Venom 4-inch tubes, Texas rig that puppy with a small bullet weight. That's something I got to do. I just need to expand on my tube sizes. It's, it's kind of like my jig game was forever, man. I had like one thing, like a half ounce football, and I just, it worked for yeah. years. <laughs> like, right. I like, yeah. <laughs> the 90 degree heads are, that's what I usually prefer on them. I think I'm, yeah, you know what? No, I uh, I feel like the 90 degree head gets unstuck better than the 60 degree head. You're pulling straight up instead of still in Right, it. yeah, or you yeah. kind of, like, it allows you to pivot it. Like, it rolls over on itself versus, yeah. like, the 60. I feel like the 60 degree head, it stays where it's stuck, and you're just rolling it further into it. Versus yeah. on the 90 degree head, it wants to, like, roll it, out with it. Yeah. That's my theory. It comes up, it makes sense. Yeah, uh, it, it provides a better leverage point. Um... Jeff fishes the STS tubes, STH tubes though. I think Netbait makes them. Pro model is dumb looking, but fire. Yeah, dude, that's literally what I was talking about. Like in one of his videos, he posted, he had this absurd color, and like his first cast out on Kong Island, he caught like a freaking seven pound smallie this year. It was insane. Yeah, I can't wait to go back. End of this month, baby. I'm out. You're going up there? Yeah, with TJ. I'm not. Why not? I hate that place. <laughs> <laughs> you got to come back. You're coming back. I know. I want to go. Um. Zach, hate fishing heavyweights and shallow. Wacky, no weight for me. You're missing out. Um, so I'll do crazy hick baits makes a great white glow in the dark one. Yeah. Um, what's his face? Will, the previous owner of Wicked Custom Rods, did really well doing that for Lakers. I really hope I didn't. Everything's fine. Um, I, I really did not mean to. Die. I wasn't thinking. I was just speaking. Um, yes. but -da -ba -da -ba -da. Z fish definitely 90 degree, but the only reason why is for the fall. Definitely spirals better. I agree with that. Uh, Brian, is there a technique not to get hung up with the tubes and standard heads? I always T-rig mine to help prevent hang up. More popping, less dragging. Like especially stuff like that where like I'm, it's a slimmer profile, um, you know, more streamlined where it's likely to kind of get wedged in a little more easily. I tend to pop it. I won't even bother trying to drag it unless I know I'm on sand. 
But even still, you'll end up finding that one stupid rock that thing gets hung yeah, up on. Yeah, 90% of the times you go out, you're going to... Well, 100% of the time you go out using tubes, you're going to lose lose a couple. Yeah, every time. Um, Mike, do it right now. <laughs> Is six and a half inch... Oh, no. Old Island Fishing. Six and a half inch too big for Senko? No. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Catch freaking half pounders on that. Don't be afraid to downsize <laughs> on those Senkos, too. Oh, yeah, that. Oh, who is it? <laughs> Travis went out to where he just went on Monday. That's about all the same size fish that I caught. <laughs> um, oh, God. That place can suck, or it can be the best place in the world. Which place? Where you just went? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, no, dude, six and a half inch is definitely not too big. I know, like, it's just like anything else, man. I know guys that only fish the teeny tiny ones, and I know guys that only fish the giant ones, like the seven and eight inch models. It's just all about what you're confident in and what you're trying to make work. I'm not a one trick pony, obviously, except for my tubes, apparently. I've got different sizes for everything that I have confidence in. And I will always start in the middle of the pack. Depending on the conditions, I will try and go on either side of that size, you know, depending on the time of the year. Middle of summer, I try and go big. Gets colder, I downsize. I keep it simple. Uh, because I, how many times have I been out there? I'm like analysis by paralysis or paralysis by analysis. I get too much info in my head. I don't know what to do. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what to do. What do I do? I'm like, I don't know. Try fishing. <laughs> <laughs> Mass bass lunkers. Best spinning reel under 100. Oh, you know the answer to that. The spinning reel? Yeah. Luger. Luger president. Luger president. I haven't really tried many others under 100. The Mach 2 speed spin. I think it's just the Mach 2 spin now from Lou's. I have four of those. That's an eighty dollar reel. That is phenomenal. I, I would, have, I would still say it's better than the present. But if if you're gonna spend a hundred dollars, I have the Shimano Sedona. Yeah, that was one hundred and twenty dollars. I think spend the extra hundred and twenty. It's a hundred. It's it's worth it. I love it. The good thing about spinning gear. It might have been more than that though. You don't need to break the bank to get a good quality spinning reel. No, you don't. <laughs> um, casting gear though. That's like stay at a hundred dollars or more. I have yet to find a good casting reel for under a hundred dollars. Yeah. Now you can find some really good ones used for about a hundred bucks. I'd do that all day long. I would buy even like a five or six year old Shimano or Daiwa for a hundred bucks before I buy any other, literally any other brand new reel for under a hundred. And that includes one of them sponsored by. I just don't trust them. I have, I've had way too much bad luck and this is going back eight plus years ago now when they're even cheaper for sub $100 reels that for casting reels, I just won't do it. But for spinning, like pretty much anything on a hundred bucks is good. Yeah. That's just Sienna too. That was a good one. I didn't, I, I almost got that one, but then I, I just decided on a Sedona. It was gold. It looks cool. <laughs> I missed chat. Oh, I'm fishing I get back up. What bait is in the tank? Oh, hang on. Oh, Wait, Pasha, I've heard if you're looking for a good shallow water bite, you need to fish shallow, and for clear water, the bass tend to relate to deeper water. Is this true? No. Wait, what? Heard... It's far more condition and water temp dependent than anything else, regardless oh. of water clarity. Yeah. Clarity doesn't really, I mean... It has an impact. Further but... casts, yes. <laughs> but... Yeah, gin clear water on a calm day. Yeah, you want to cast, like, at least 100 feet. Big time. Yeah. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo, just watch Shimano Silver Speed around 11. There you go, Ferris. Oh, yeah, Steve, agree with you. Shimano Sienna, too. Um, oh, yeah, OLN fishing. What bait is that in the tank? Sorry, can you give it a twitch? Sorry, hang on. I can't reach it. That, I think it's just a three inch speed shad from um, Bass Pro, but it's an Okashira jig. So it's a 1 16th ounce Mega Bass Okashira screw head jig head with a three, uh, three inch swim bait. So it doesn't really do much when you're twitching it, but when you swim it. I don't know if you'll be able to see that. Man. That looks good, actually. Can you see that? No, not on the screen. You can't. Unless you like. Oh, yeah, you can. Uh, well, you can kind of see the head edges. wobble. It's hard. It's just a short tank, so there's not much you can do. But the plus side to that, we covered it earlier. It it like spirals on the fall. 
amongst other things. And then when you're just straight swimming it, it kind of weeble wobbles. It's really good. Tom, um, Abu Garcia, if the devil fished, he would fish Abu Garcia. <laughs> That's how I feel about Abu Garcia. Ah, oh, I can't yeah. do it, man. I've had nothing but terrible luck with that company. I've had two and I didn't like them. I had two. They were straight garbage. I had two rods. They both broke. Uh, just kidding. I've had a few Abu rods and they were okay, but I broke. Yep. They're the only <laughs> rods I had and they were both totally different uh, models from each other. It's not like it was the same model. They're two different models bought a year apart from different stores. And they were the only two rods that I that I bought brand new that broke. I've had two other rods that broke on me. There were those old like team Daiwa rods that had like the telescoping butt handle. They came out to like seven feet, eight inches or something like that. Um, but I bought those used and they were pretty old already by that point. And I broke both of those setting the hook into a rock. But my Abu Garcia rods, they just, one, one broke setting the hook on a fish and another one broke when I was just trying to take a Senko out of a tree branch that Literally, how many times have I done that with other anything else? Literally, any other bait with any other rod. Have I ever broken any other rod doing that? How many times did I do it just this past weekend? <laughs> a lot. Mm, two times. It was like, yeah. I don't even think I had that second. I didn't even have that second rod for a year, and I I got hung up on this little branch and just you know, a little zit, zit. <laughs> what? <laughs> I can't do it. I'll never buy that product. Not not that company ever again. No. The baits you always have on deck. You first. Jig, chatterbait, some sort of finesse like a drop shot, and and rat. Right now, jig, T rig, Texas rig, weightless fluke or Sanko, but I like the fluke better. Chatterbait, shaky head. Mm, depending on where I am, Ned rig if it's like pretty clear water. Um, and or drop shot and then if I know it's gonna be windy like I'll also throw on a spinner bait like oh, yeah, spinner bait too. like those are all my go-to's and then like depending upon specific conditions and locations those are like the additional ones that I will always have on but regardless of where I go everything else I first started with like those are always 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 tied on what kind of jig will vary greatly if it's large mouth it's a beast coast half ounce football jig with some sort of like three and a half to four inch craw if it's more smallmouth related clear water then it's going to be the beast coast hustler that we were talking about earlier quarter ounce little swim bait trailer easy peasy i should bring those in for my co-worker chad chad if you're still watching i'm going to bring you something tomorrow if i can remember to i think i got right there in the day box is there one in the package right there yeah. i'm pretty sure there is which one's that like the one that I'm going to take home. <laughs> Stealth pump. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I got you one, buddy. Um, nice, Tom. That's good to hear. As long as somebody's having good luck with it. Good. Dean Beefmaster. What about topwater? <laughs> oh, you first. Topwater? Yeah. Ain't nobody going to hear you from back there. <laughs> Dude, it's 10 15. <laughs> Rat. <laughs> what else <laughs> rat <laughs> uh, um, I'll throw the spook yeah uh, the frog uh, whopper plopper drunken mullet which is like a variation of the whopper plopper yeah it's a jointed whopper plopper um couple couple different type of like poppers pride rat for the win pride rat for the win <laughs> Yes. <laughs> um, what are they kind of top water? Um, I know you like the buzz bait. Buzz bait um, is one of my favorites this time of the year. The spook is always cool though to get hit on the spook. It is. If I'm going to a place of smallmouth, I'm throwing a spook. Um, I have been trying to throw a popper more often, but uh, if I get smallmouth, then I'm going spook, baby whopper plopper. Um, popper, if I feel like neither of those are getting bit, but I feel like they're going to be biting top water. Oh, I feel like a popper is better when like it gets wicked hot and like first thing early in the morning when water temp, like, you know, they're pretty well into summer mode, but you're still trying to get that early morning bite where they haven't like kind of slowed down and gone back deeper again. Um, dude, buzz bait's just so hard to beat whatever you're doing. Um, obviously frog, 
wake bait. I've been trying to throw a lot more often. Not just the rat, like a variety of different wake yeah, baits. Yeah, I got another one. I got to catch a fish on that. Yeah, but that was the um, shell cracker. Not the shell cracker, but the same the company. Black dog shell cracker. It's the big dog. The big Something dog. like that. I don't know. Yeah. It's as a, a dog footprint on the back of its head. If you know what it is, let me know. Yeah. <laughs> Sir Altitude, does a mermaid lay eggs or do they have human type babies? You've been on very weird things on the internet. You tell me. Excuse me? What? <laughs> does a mermaid lay eggs or does it have <laughs> human type babies? It's like a frog, you know, like tadpole. But then, I don't know. I didn't need that visual <laughs> Onward. Pasha, are the Beast Coast football heads meant for flipping too? No, a football head is never meant for flipping. If you want to flip, then you want to get um, either their Vanquish jig, which is an Arky head style, or they actually have like legitimate flipping jigs. Like there's, um, oh God, it was right there on the tip of my tongue. They have two different, like they have a swim jig, the Gorilla, which you can either just swim or flip, but then they actually have one that I cannot remember for the life of me off the top of my head. I think it's the Battle Flip. That's literally a flipping jig, but it has a double wide brush guard on it, specifically meant for flipping the heaviest, nastiest crap you can throw it into. That's the one you want. That thing is absolutely killer. A lot of people I know fish that love that jig. That thing has definitely earned its way in. Team Beefmaster, I've actually never thrown a double double buzz bait. I should though. Um but Z fish slaying fish on a buzz bait. Good job. Popper and spook all day for smallies. Yep. David is talking to Pasha. Fishing mode. I'm off. All right, buddy. Have a good night. Appreciate it. Later, dude. Yeah, Mike, you're absolutely right. An, arc, an Arky covers a ton if you're trying to be efficient. It's like the jack of all trades for jig heads. The Arky head? Yeah, it yeah. kind of stands up a little bit, but not really. Nowhere near as good as efficient or as efficient as a football, but it kind of can. It um, through stuff. Yeah, veggies climbs through rocks really well. Like it, it, it does everything well, but doesn't excel at any one thing. Um, it's just I, a good rounded jig. Yeah, it is. It's good for a lot of kettle ponds around New Hampshire that we like to fish because it's got a bit of everything. Yep. You know, 100 foot stretch will have nothing but veggies and thick. And then all of a sudden it just ends and the next 100 feet is just sand and rocks. And then the next 100 feet is a mix of veggies and timber. Like, unless you rock three different jig setups so you can throw something different for every single one, Arky covers everything for you in one shot. So it's really hard to beat that. Uh, what else we got here? It's getting late. How do you all feel about Guggen baits? Next question. Um, <laughs> man, I don't know. They, some of their stuff does look pretty freaking good. I just won't use it. Because they paid for the rights to use patents from other companies that already designed baits. I'm not exactly sure how true that is for, because I've literally never looked into it, so... Like, I'm not even actually going to say that as fact because it's not. I have no idea. I know that there was there was one bait, and I can't remember which one it was. It was a striking thing. And they, they paid for the patent to literally just use the patent. Use yeah, the same was, design. Uh, it was a crankbait, too, from Sixth Sense that they took. Yeah. So, like, they've done some other things where, you know, they... I mean, it, it's... I, like, I haven't seen anything, I did, but I have admittedly not dove into what they do to really see if anything that they do... I think you're right, Mike. It was a rage tail. Um, I don't know. From on the surface, because I've never actually looked at their website to see what they have. I don't think they make anything that's original. And all their their price is super pricey. They're good businessmen. You know, they know what they're doing. They're, they've absolutely capitalized on what they've done, and they've oh, gotten yeah. rich doing it. I cannot support them. I had a personal run-in with Lunkers, and I think he's a, not a class act. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> Yeah, polar opposite of that. Um, Nuts. Tom? <laughs> Her? Yeah. <laughs> Her? <laughs> Sorry, that wasn't nice. <laughs> um, speaking of wake baits, I just saw the Valley Hill Boogie Back. Gonna try that one out. No, Dirty Dirish has a video on it in 40 bucks. Why not? I have no idea what any of that means. We're going to look it up on a There's dunk because now I'm curious. A lot of weird baits online now. Buy it. Try it. Catch fish on it. Love it. Yeah, especially if it's good value like that, man. Like, that's kind of the hard thing, especially when you're getting into new things, especially on these bigger baits. Like, if you can find one that looks good and you think it's going to have, like, for a wake bait, for me, I want it to wake really well, really slow. And have, uh, what I'm trying to do now is expand on my variety of how loud of a knock it has, too, on the retrieve. 
So I guess if you have none, that doesn't matter. Whatever you get is going to be great. And then from there, you can kind of work around that. But if you got something really loud, go for subtle and vice versa. Um, Z fish. I don't understand how they're doing so well, though. I guess kids buy them out, but everyone I fish with around has the same opinions as you and I. That's because that's literally their 18 the vast majority of their demographic, 13 mm -hmm. to 18. And probably younger, actually. Yeah. And it's... Which is fine. They're doing great. They, they're freaking rich. Who's, right. Whose dream isn't to fish and be rich? Right. And get rich off fishing. It's <laughs> We would love to do that. Yeah. Yes. Yes, we would. <laughs> we're not going to cut corners to do it. <laughs> no. And the only thing about them is... Yes, they're getting a ton of more younger generation into fishing, which is good. Oh, it absolutely is. There's a caveat, but, but I don't think that they're good stewards of the sport because they don't always have, actually very rarely from what I've seen, have like a, a positive, what they don't impart positive vibes in the sense that like they're not, I don't know, like I, I haven't seen, what's his face, uh, Lake Fork guy in ages since he joined like that group he changed and i don't like i didn't like how he changed so i stopped watching him yeah he used to be he used to be phenomenal well he, he still be, is a really good angler yeah but like the way he presented himself um Wait. more than anything like the type of content he was putting out was much more educational like i used to love that guy he was well spoken he absolutely knows what he's doing for fishing and he like did well to teach and not just teach you how to fish but like educate you on every aspect outside of that and i feel like the rest of the Googans don't do that. So you got all these younger kids that are coming into fishing and there's like a lot of etiquette about it. I'm not saying like a stay off my lake kind of etiquette, but like clean up after yourself, you know? And yeah, nobody owns the water, but like I, I literally had a couple of guys that looked straight up like Googans when we were at Champlain. I was fishing in a giant bay and I was the only one working this pocket and I was boat five feet off the edge of the reed line working the last 100 feet of a thousand foot stretch of cattails and these guys literally came all the way across the lake from the other side of this giant cove and parked 50 feet in front of me i was moving i'm a troll motor halfway up 50 percent speed i was cruising along that pitching the crap out of it and they just came right down and barreling right in front of me like like that kind of behavior to me is like fundamentally yeah, they don't know etiquette no and that's that's what i don't like about what they're bringing to the sport because i feel like what they portray is that to a T. And that's the only thing I don't like. But I'm sure in real life they're they're moving around people and stuff like but they're not showing it. Right. And kids are just like, oh well, you just fish wherever the f you want. No. <clears throat> they should probably add that to the videos. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, we will sell out and take you with us, buddy. <laughs> Sold. One Canadian. <laughs> um so <clears throat> Oh, I agree 100% about stewardship, but do you think there are that many kids compared to older bass fish in the marquee? Now there are. There big are, time, no, dude. There are now. It's crazy how big it's blown up. Like, look at the high school fishing scene alone. Like, how many kids are fishing in there now? I get so many texts from so many people, like, just all the time. Oh, it took me fishing. I want to learn. I want to learn. I can't right. teach you in one freaking day. Right. Give me 20 years with you. <laughs> <laughs> um. You guys know. You know how hard it is to learn how to fish. It's, Mike. It's not easy. Well, that's Jake Bonk. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, Lake Fork guy had a tumor. I don't know if he actually had cancer, but he had a tumor. That was yeah. sucked. They actually came back a second time. Dude, I wasn't that's laughing brutal. at Lake Fork guy. I was laughing at the one else. Yeah, one else Jake Bonk. Whoa. We should just post it, dude. I'm not posting that. Nobody's gonna see the that's never gonna see the light of day. The day that I shut this channel down, I'm like, oh by the way, mic drop. <laughs> <laughs> I mean jig yeah, drop. That'd be a good way to do it. <laughs> um Bob, what's your retrieving a wake bait? Just slow crank it or do you vary that? Like walk the dog. Oh that dude, that's hundred percent you. You're way better at it than I am. I uh, just I cast out wait sometimes I wait for like the big ripple to go away or whatever but I I slow roll it until I can I know that it's doing the action that I want it to do whether it's going to be faster or slower whatever they're going to be hitting I always wait like figure out that action and I it's usually super slow sometimes add in a little twitch a little twitch or like even just like snap it a little bit 
but not often. I can't really snap it now with my wrist, but once you snap that wrist just fine. Oh, I snapped it right <laughs> in half. <laughs> but, <it's>... yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Shut up, Dad. Um, <laughs> now nah, I usually just do like a slow crank, and they usually smack it as soon as it comes out of the lead line. Yeah. Oh, it's funny too because remember Saturday night this past weekend we went out and we were struggling for a little bit. I was like, hey. You know where I think they might be? Is right in the transition of that super mega shallow flat where the bluegill are likely spawning now, right at the roars that rolls off steep to deeper water. Wait. Well, we went over there and you caught what four or five in that one spot. <laughs> and a huge crappie. Yeah, dude, that slab. That was a freaking platter. That wasn't even a dinner it was plate. Like that. <laughs> dude, it was huge. That thing in the middle of winter would have that would have been a feast in and of itself, that oh, one yeah. fish. Should have kept it, but no, at least right giving now. it to Kyle. He would have eaten it. What are you still eating right now? I thought they're still wormy. Or is it still kind of really enough? Nah, I'm sure it's fine. Yeah. Worms get cooked anyway. It's like I rings. saw a hilarious thing on Facebook just the other day. It was one of the fishing groups. Some guy caught a trout and he was, he had it. It was a picture of it all cut open. He's like, what are these things inside of this? And can I still eat it? And it was it was gross. I don't even remember what it was. Sankos? No, it was like... Oh, worms? worms? Yeah. yeah gross. And someone's like, oh yeah, bud, not a problem. Season that thing with butter, salt, and pepper. Get your cast iron pan up real hot. Give it a quick sear. Throw it in the oven for 350 degrees and then throw that shit straight in the trash. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Worms get pretty gross in the fish in the summer. It's, yeah. yeah, dude, it was. It looked like like a squid was growing out of this thing. There were so <sighs> many and they were huge. Oh, I've never seen it like that. It was bad. We cut open the uh, brown trout when I was with Kyle. And they had uh, flukes in it, yep. in its stomach, and Sankos. It's pretty gross. Maine's been trying to ban soft plastics for the last three years now, three or four years. Mm. Every year, they some one, whatever it was, representative or whoever, tries to get put on the bill that they want to make it, so they ban all soft plastics and you're only allowed to use biodegradables because of that. Because mm. they care, so they only care about trout. Sports Central. I personally love Guggen, especially because they got me completely into fishing. There's nothing I enjoy more than their vids. But I agree about some meh etiquette from, but from their fans especially. Yeah, dude. There's nothing wrong with that. Like I, I don't, I got no problem with anybody that likes them. <clears throat> um, and again, like as long as to an extent, as long as you're getting people involved into something, especially like outdoors related, especially fishing, like that's good. Um. I just mean for me personally, I like to see a little bit more focus in the stewardship. They, they just the etiquette aspect of it. But that that's me. That's me personally. What I hold near and dear to my heart and what I hope to impart unto others. So that's where my difference in opinion and outlook comes from. Um, summertime bass locations. What do you mean by summertime bass locations? Do in you the mean water. like right now? <laughs> Don't make eye contact. <laughs> yeah. Sports Central is totally fine that you like you. <laughs> um <laughs> Uh, well man that's loaded it depends on what time of summer we're talking about early so all right well let's cover the whole gambit you want to go first you want me to go first i don't care okay so early <laughs> summer we're talking like right now right um oh hey bryson thanks for joining dude huh? well like, i mean oh, yeah it's officially the start of summer right couple days a couple weeks ago sure it's it's summer it's hot as frick out yeah um so early summer like right now we're talking like you know still pretty early into the post spawn transitions like anywhere from the bank like hard structure i still really love but now i'm also looking for vegetation all the lily pads are becoming much more prominent so as those become more prominent create more shade with these longer hotter days I'll focus in on that. It's always good to find structure, especially in transition from shallow, deep water, shady side of things later in the day. Like that's what I'm looking for. Um, if I'm talking like midsummer, it's hot. It's after the bluegill spawned. All the fish have kind of scattered. You can catch them anywhere from the bank to the middle of the deepest point of the lake. Um, you know, for like a standard New England kettle pond. Then, ah, dude, I, oof. I personally like deeper vegetation, especially isolated vegetation or deeper rock piles. Either one of those two. Like I'm still very much, when we're talking largemouth, structure, 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 structure. If they're out open water cruising, I cannot find them to save my life. And I can't 
I haven't really found something that I like to do with the exception of like shallow flats when they're chasing schools of uh, different bait fish that's like adjacent to deeper water. Then, you know, crankbaits, chatterbait, big swim baits, like whatever, you know, things like that. Uh, late summer, same deal. I'm still looking for like that deeper offshore structure, but now I'm really starting to slow down and go like bigger stuff, like Texas rig worms, things like that. Yeah, big, big, big Texas rig worms. Big old wobbly dongers. Wobbly dongers. Light oh, weight. Yes. Bomb it, drag, wait, and wait. <laughs> wait. Wait, hold on. And wait. Okay, lift and repeat. <laughs> Dude, there's something about dragging a giant Texas rig worm in the dead of summer that just gets me fired up. It works great. Um, come correct everyone. What? Oh yeah. <laughs> These New England largemouth ponds can be pretty easy to pattern by just finding wood or grass. Yeah, I mean for the most part, they're either on one or the other. Mm -hmm. You know what really comes down to my personal take is. Are they feeding up or feeding down? That's more of a smallmouth thing than it is largemouth, but even it still even holds true for largemouth. And color really becomes important. Um, overall size of the presentation, which we found this past weekend, also becomes very important. Sometimes they want a friggin' meal, man. Like Father's Day last year. I'm gonna get this. I started out pretty good with a jig. I do oh, right I'm excited if you win your free NRX plus Stella on opening day. I want Stella. What? What are you talking about, Mike? Oh, yeah, he's talking to uh, Bryson. Oh, 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 oh. So, okay. that's a 7 inch shallow crank down swim bait, hard bar. I crushed it on that, and I couldn't get bit on anything for this. But, dude, I caught 30 fish myself. My dad caught. Well, actually, it was a bit of both because I tried something like middle of the road presentation, uh, you know, jigs, crane baits and stuff like that. I It just really wasn't working out. But that big bait, I was catching fish after fish after fish. I caught 17 fish over three pounds alone on that one bait that day. Uh, and then my dad and my uncle were killing it on four inch Texas rig plastics. Nothing in between. It was on either end of the spectrum. It was crazy. Um... Burr, burr, burr. Zoom trick worm, side worm, one inch to one and a half inch up the side past the hook. Works well. Oh, I like that. Let's give that a shot. That's one of the things I'm trying to do is like think of other different finesse techniques that we can try. Just pretty much go out and make something up and it'll work. Yeah, pretty much. If it doesn't look utterly stupid, like dead action, it's probably gonna work. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, I'm hey, sorry, Mike. I'm just tired. <laughs> I'm honestly, bored. I know we gotta wrap this up. <laughs> yeah, well, actually, it's ten thirty. We should wrap this up. Mike, do you remember the first time we went to the St. Lawrence, and I told you when Andrew caught that four point four smallie on, and you're like, "That's just stupid." <laughs> Ain't stupid if it works. Mm -hmm. It still works. It still works. <laughs> it was drop shotting a specific bait, <laughs> and you were so mad. <laughs> It's still a secret. I haven't told anybody. No, because it, it still works. Like I don't think anybody really does it. No, I don't think so either. I wonder. Um, Sharon knows. He called me out on it. Did and he? I, and I was like, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Winky face. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Z fish. Started using the floating worm this year for shallow fish. You guys tried that? Similar to a Senko, more similar to a fluke. Uh, no, I haven't. What the hell's a floating one? I don't know. Tom, I Tom Hens. I fished with Bill Lowen, and he drop shot drop shotted a tube jig. A tube jig? You mean like a, just a tube? I'm 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 confused. Maybe he had a tube on the bottom and a drop shot above it. Maybe. All I can tell you is that drop shotted <laughs> a tube. There is a it's, wide it's, variety. Drop shot at the tube. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've done that. Yeah, we've done that a lot. I was literally about to say there is. You'd be surprised how many different kinds of baits you can get away with a drop shot, and it works. It all works. Works killer. Like a bunch of different finesse baits. The tube, like even some bigger baits. Like I've drop shot a five inch craw before and got bit on. <laughs> no, like That's super finesse. Power shot, but. Yeah, but it was still like all eight pound line to a quarter ounce weight. To a two aught hook like I have here on the flick, you know, like it's it's a bigger hook to a five inch crawl, um, net baits packer crawl, the five inch, and it, it worked, it was crazy. 
We won a tournament doing that with a four inch finesse crawl. In the last, literally in the last five minutes. Oh. I caught like a two and a quarter pounder to call out this little, another one of our rats that we had. And that gave us the win. It was amazing. That was a terrible day. It's like 98 degrees and no wind. <laughs> Bluebird skies. Was that the river? Yep. Yeah, that yeah. sucked. Sucked so much. You should consider throwing the tube in your drop shot, Bryson. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. <sighs> That's facts. Cut any creature bait in half and nose hook it and you're good. Uh, I'm not going to confirm that. All right. Any other last parting thoughts? It is already 1030, 5. Uh, my alarm is going to go off in six hours. So I'm not going to edit tonight. I'm just going to go to bed. Just kidding. I'm going to have another drink and then go to bed. Because well, I'm going to go home and have a big old bowl of ice cream <laughs> yes. and then go to bed. <laughs> That's exactly what I'm going to do. And ice cream. <laughs> uh, thanks, yeah, thanks, Bryce, you're actually right. <laughs> um... Yeah, Mike, you should, dude. Some gelato. Some gelato. <laughs> mm -hmm. He partakes in the same things you do, friend. Ooh. Okay. Mike's got some good stuff. You should see the things he sends pictures of. Mm, to me. <laughs> some gelato. Yeah, some definitely some gelato. Some half baked. Oh, dude, there's a good chance you're gonna open up the border for before I go to the St. Lawrence. Ow, with TJ at the end of this month. Jig and spoon train on those. Shiner legs. Yeah, I know. I need to get on that jigging spoon. I'll, I'll do it. I'm gonna get one. I'm gonna get one. It's gonna happen. Open the border. I want to see it. All right, Brian, you're welcome. Blame Canada. <laughs> <laughs> we can though. <laughs> really, well, I mean, we brought in all the sickness, but you yeah, guys shut it down. <sighs> all right, that's. It's been a good night. We're gonna wrap it up there. Thank you all greatly for watching, especially to um, Grat and Ferris for the donations tonight. Greatly appreciate you guys. It's always helpful. Well on our way to getting Andrew the PC upgrade that he desperately needs yep. so he can start helping out with the channel. Everything's going to be awesome. I hope you all have a wonderful weekend of fishing this weekend. Again, keep an open mind. That's what the whole point of the stream was tonight. Go big, go small. You need both ends of the spectrum. Green pumpkin, man. It's just been working really good right now. But maybe consider throwing in a little bit of orange too. Depending on where you're at, what your water tempers are at. It's just been working really well. But again, big thing is keep an open mind for both ends of the spectrum, both in where the fish are located and what presentation techniques you're throwing because it's just a total crapshoot. They're going to be feasting. And once you lock it in, you're going to have a great day. So keep an open mind. That's the biggest thing to go away with from this tonight. So thank you all greatly. Sign it off. I'm going to shut her down. All right. Well, I had fun tonight. <laughs> <laughs> but next week should be a good show so make sure you tune in next week same time same place eight o'clock next thursday see you then